Welcome to the show, everybody. This is episode number 180 of the Iron Coop Fights Movies. This episode is available on iTunes, YouTube, Google Play, and hosted by SoundCloud. I'm Kier, your host. With me on the show today are my co-hosts, Emerson. Hey, what's going on? And Everett. Hey, what's up? This week, the team reviews Spider-Man Homecoming, followed by movie, television, and video game news. If you have not seen the review of the week and would like to avoid spoilers, check the show notes for the timestamp so you can still hear our news sections. On to our review of the week. Thrilled by his experience with the Avengers, young Peter Parker returns home to live with his Aunt May. Under the watchful eye of mentor Tony Stark, Parker starts to embrace his newfound identity as Spider-Man. He also tries to return to his normal daily routine, distracted by thoughts and proving himself to be more than just a friendly neighborhood superhero. Peter must soon put his powers to the test when the evil vulture emerges to threaten everything that he holds dear. I'm going to explain our rating system. On this show, we give the titles that we have watched a rating of win, draw, or loss. A win is a title that we would highly recommend, while a draw is a title we didn't love but recognize others may appreciate. A loss means we do not recommend the title. By the way, did anyone go back and check and see what we said? Do you guys remember? Did we like this yeah. movie the first time? Uh, I, I know I did, and Everett did, I think. And you were oh, you liked it, but you were the most critical of it, I think. So I, 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 I took it as like generally enjoyable, but also like had issues. All right, so why don't you go first? Um, so I'm going to give it a draw. There are parts of this I really do like, and I absolutely see why a lot of people like it. However, at the same time, I feel like, especially watching all these other Spider-Man movies beforehand, results in me realizing that the my favorite parts of this movie do not really revolve around Spider-Man. They revolve around the other people, be that Tony Stark or the Vulture or these other characters, which I really enjoy. And I realized that to me, the scenes with just Peter Parker tend to be the ones that I enjoy the least, at least in this movie. So it's going to be a draw from me. Yeah, that's interesting. Everett? Yeah. Um, I'm going to give it a draw as well. Emerson basically got all the points I was going to say down. Like watching the older movies first, it's before watching this really made me appreciate them and miss that slow burn that they gave you in the real character development. My, but my main problem with this is the fact that Peter Parker seems a bit too advanced for the setting that he's placed in. Does that make sense? Like, in the older movies that we've seen, Peter Parker is like, you know, he starts off year one, he's very inexperienced, he has to learn as he goes, and then he slowly, bit by bit, gets more and more advanced. In this, it seems like Year one, Peter is just immediately thrown into advanced level scenarios. That he doesn't really earn that character development that they're trying to give him. That and the movie seems to go a little bit fast for my taste, like in comparison. And I'm not necessarily. How do you a fan think Toby Maguire advanced? Well, like over the three movies, you see him go from like, you know, lonely loser nerd to like a little bit more confident in himself. He starts succeeding. He gets the girl. It's so you're talking about Peter Parker. Of, I'm talking about Peter Parker and Spider Man. Like bit by bit, they start to like. Well, he didn't really improve go up that staircase. Did he? Wasn't he the same essentially? Like wasn't okay, he? If, I, if you want to, if you want to, I guess. But if you want to talk about Peter Parker, I'm um, fine. Just talk about Peter Parker. Yeah, well, that Peter argument Parker makes sense. Did that. All right. But with this, like, <clears throat> you see what I'm saying, though, right? Like, he seems a little bit too advanced for year one, Peter. Like, he's only had the powers for six months, and he's already doing all these massive things. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so my review is <clears throat> basically I feel like I'm torn between a draw and a win because yeah. I really, really liked certain parts of it that I don't remember. But like the final part with Vulture doesn't make sense. And then, like you guys said, we're missing the spotlight on Peter's personality. And in fact, you could argue that he doesn't have one. Um, and like, so I don't even know. It's like the movie. I don't know if the movie is just not giving it enough time or if they actually like forgot that there's a certain there's like certain notes you have to hit with Peter Parker and it can't just be like, oh, what? Oh. Like <laughs> it can't just be that. Um, so I I have to give it a draw because there were definitely part, parts of the movie where I was like, this is a win. And then 
it, and then I would say the middle of the movie kind of like undermines it, and then it has a good finale, and then the very end is not so good. So, um, but what we can get to that. All right, let's go into spoilers. Hopefully, we can actually do the timestamps this time, um, <laughs> without it getting destroyed. All right, that so would be nice. Um, the this the beginning of the movie here where they have the cleanup crew and like Vulture's crew and all that. I really like seeing that side of the battle. I do too because yeah. it, it sort of adds some realism and some consequence to the world where it reminds you that like after the credits roll, there's other stuff going on yeah. and that there's long reaching effects. And, and it's just like seeing things from a different lens, like just like seeing the Chitauri just laying there in the rubble. Like that's something you don't normally see. And, the construction workers like trying to like oh yeah this is interesting like what do they do with all these like major corpses of the leviathan um yeah and how they're all like it was just cool very interesting um damage control is that lady is that lady from the comics i, I no don't idea. i don't know i think she is and she seems oh, she seems very like she seems to look a certain way intentionally and i think it's from the comics um what about this corruption thing where they, they kind of point out, so the guys who make the mess get paid to clean it up? I mean, yeah, it, it's interesting because I can see it from both sides. On the one hand, like, I do believe that the government and the Avengers need to be the ones cleaning this up. Because, like, the average dude shouldn't be able to be like, oh, a Chitari blaster, cool. Like, but at the same side, at the same sense, it's like, the city gave them a contract. Evidently, this was decided later and no one told them. By the time they told them, it's too late. And it does seem like, oh, okay, so he gets the money for it. That kind of sucks. But, like, also, um, <clears throat> wait, what so, do you mean by he gets the money for it? So, like, you know, Stark is oh, funding okay, the group that is. Now, I'm not a lawyer, but when they have a contract and the city takes over, they should, like, in a court, it seems like they would probably have to pay out. Uh, the vultures crew. Yeah, they would have to. They would have to buy it out, or they would have to tell the vultures crew to work under them. Right. Like so. Either yeah. way, he he is okay. The movie kind of acts like they just ripped out like the floor from underneath him. Yeah, right? I mean, they're, am I wrong? Yeah. Well, he has it's a contract. Weird. Yeah, he has a contract, but it's weird because it's like a government thing. Like the government should buy him out. They or, have to. They have to pay the contract. They do, but, like, there's some weird stuff where, like, I don't know, alien invasion and everything. Maybe the government's like, eh, get fucked. Yeah, but the they made a contract with the city. Isn't that the government? The city government, but the federal government can overturn things, like, right. according to, like, acts and laws and stuff. Yeah, I get it, but I, I, I definitely think, like, he gets paid. Look, in the real world, yes, there, he would get money one way or another, but in the movie universe, they need him to be uh, disgruntled. Like, yeah. why wouldn't Tony Stark just be like, yeah, here, take the money. In fact, take double. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, um, see you later. Anyway, so we cut to, like, what is it, eight years later, which is wrong, right? Isn't that? Yeah, the timeline's a little. It says eight stuff. years, doesn't it? Yeah, I think so. And eight years, yes. The Avengers battle, what year was that supposed to happen in? It's not 2012, like, the, the year it was released, right? Isn't it 2010? Um, I don't know. We saw that official MCU timeline. Let's try to find I, it. I want to say it's 2012. Um, yeah, but something wasn't right. So remember, they, they changed it. Okay, I'm looking at this. God, it's like a giant thing. Okay. Um, oh, God. This is like way more in depth than I was. <laughs> Forty-five years B A I M before Iron Man. What the fuck? <laughs> what the? <laughs> Fury's B -A -I -M. big week before Avengers. Does this? It, it literally stops before Avengers. Wow. What a worthless. <laughs> I I remember like something happened where. They changed the years, and it turned out like because of I think partly because of Spider Man that they it it didn't happen the years that like like they're like a couple years ahead of us. 
Right, yeah, because yeah. they're in the future. I mean, now they obviously are, but even, like, back then it turned out that they were... Yeah, I think they were, like, two years ahead, weren't they? Yeah. Does uh, the Avengers take place? Let's... Okay, here's what I found. It says... Avengers in the in the timeline takes place in 2010, and then you skip forward to 2017, which is where Civil War and Spider Man take place. So when does Age of Ultron take place? 2015 still. Age, Age of Age of Ultron takes place in 2015. 2015. Yeah. See, I just I just googled it this and it says the I'm Avengers takes it. place in 2012, the year it was released. This is the same for all Marvel Cinematic Universe movies except Captain America, the first Avenger. That's not correct because Guardians of the Galaxy is not in the year it was released. So that's just old. All right. So basically, whatever. We don't know. Um, all right. So so they cut to eight years later, whatever that means. Because Peter wouldn't have been... Peter was too young. He would have had to have been a little child, right? If he's it, like... Isn't that what... Isn't that 15? what caused the, uh, like, one of the big things? Remember, like, they retconned that kid in the Iron Man mask in Iron Man 2 as Peter Parker, and people were saying, like, well, if he's, like... Was that official? I eight, didn't hear that. I heard that that was official, but it's, like, it, it's not really official because it's not like they went back and added his face. So Well, you never see his face. It's just, it's considered to be Peter Parker, but that yeah, kid was, like, seven or eight. Yeah, they just say it. Like, you can just say I'm that. gonna I'm going to just say that that's not real. Because I yeah, don't I like don't that. think it's real either. But. It's also weird. Like Aunt May's not there, and also um, he's in California. Like, <laughs> no, it was New York. Was that Stark Expo in New York? Yeah, it was in Queens, I think. Not Queens. It was a. Uh, it was wherever that like, where's that globe thing? Remember the World's Fair? Where is that? I don't uh, know. I thought it. I mean, the the first two Iron Man movies were in usually in California. It's, I think I know the globe thing he's talking about, but I thought that was in Florida. Um, it says Stark yeah. Expos in Flushing Meadows, New York. Yeah. So. Anyway. <laughs> um, all right. So whatever they go eight years later, it's not right. I I like to see the vulture wings. Like I think they look cool. Yep, um, I agree. They. Just shame to, they never like, made a hot toys figure that. of him. I I really like they the vultures. Making, just it's not design. Yeah. Like, yeah. And just the idea of like why he's a vulture seems way yeah. better than uh, whatever in the comics, it was. He's like uh, he tries to take your life force through his talons. Yeah, mm-hmm. and he's like actually a bird man, isn't he? He has in like yeah, he's obsessed with birds. Like I got to be honest. <laughs> regardless of what we say beyond this, I I would m- I am much happier that the vulture got treatment in this version than Raimi or the other one. Yeah, because I think some of Marvel's attempt to make it, like, realistic and to build, like, some of their style really benefits the villains, and at least in terms of design, I would say. I'm definitely a, a fan of the mech suit versus the wing suit. The mech suit? Well, he's using, like, a flight suit in this. It's not, like, directly oh, connected okay. to his I hands. I see what you mean, yeah. Um, I thought you were trying to say you like the rhino better than... No, no, I'm talking version. about like this version versus like um, the PS4 version of the comic book. Oh God, my dogs might start barking. Um, I like, I, I like the Chitari. All right, you guys just keep going. Um, so, what do you think of the opening? Like, because the movie, the movie very quickly establishes the um, Spider-Man Iron Man relationship as like mentor mentory. Mm-hmm. See, I know a lot of people liked that. But in my opinion, that's sort of where some of the issues start to become present. Because, well, I love seeing Iron Man in this, and I like seeing Iron Man interact with Spider-Man. That is more interesting to me than when Spider-Man's on his own. When he's, like, walking around school and he's with fucking, what's his name? Uh, Uh, Ned Leeds. Yeah, Ned, and they're, like, looking at that girl that's not MJ. What the fuck is her name? on her. Yeah, no, and like, I, but those parts just, I was like, eh, I just didn't like them all that much. It felt very like, whatever. Whereas the parts where either the Vulture, I really like following the Vulture storyline. Like mm. every time he's on screen, every time Michael Keaton is doing something, I'm like, oh, this is really interesting. When Iron Man is talking to Spider-Man, I'm like, oh, okay, this is cool. Like, this is interesting too. But then when he's kind of on his own, I don't know, man. It just, 
there's something missing there, like Kia said, either the substance or the beats or the personality, where it's just kind of like whatever, especially, um, we'll get into this later, I know, but when he gets like trapped in the, what is the it, rubble? the Department of, oh, no, 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 it's a uh, damage control vault. Yeah, that that's like the bigger issue, and I'm sure we'll talk about it when we get there. Uh, Kia, we're just talking about how, um, as the movie kind of progresses, like right at the beginning, it very quickly sets up that mentor to mentor relationship between Spider-Man and Iron Man, and we're asking if that is necessarily a good thing for Peter Parker as a character. Yeah, I don't think so because it, even though it, it kind of was cool and it was like a new take on the character it really dominated the movie so you couldn't you didn't have time for peter parker like dealing with himself it was all like everything in the context of tony stark and what is what is mr stark going to think about this and mr stark about that blah 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 it's like that's the internal conflict not like i'm peter parker like (laughs) yeah um there's like a, a the common theme of peter doesn't get what he wants ever and he's always like getting kicked, you know. Remember when he tries to go for the food of the tray, or the appetizer, and it's not there? Like that mm-hmm. sort of thing has to be a part of Peter Parker. And he he's it's not in this movie at all, as far as I can tell. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And 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 I was saying earlier how it's interesting because for me, and I mentioned this in my review a little bit. Anytime Michael Keaton's doing something or the Vulture, I'm riveted. I'm like, this is interesting. I want yeah. to see what's going on. And when Iron Man's involved, it is interesting. It's cool. But then when Iron Man kind of goes away and it's just Peter, Peter at school, Peter like trapped inside the bunker, Peter doing this, it just, I don't know. There's like something where I'm just like, eh. I think that's the fundamental flaw with the film is that Peter is just not all that interesting. Jade thinks he's cute. Like she'll be like, oh, he's so cute, like adorable. But that's not a personality trait. <laughs> yeah. So, like, she likes him because of that. And it's like, well, okay, but, like, what can we, how do we, how would you describe his personality? I think you could start with, like, he seems, he seems eager to please. He's a little arrogant, which you could say is a maturity thing. He's a nice person, like, in the most general sense. <sighs> but, but... To be quite frank with you, those personality traits could be applied to like basically everybody. Yeah. And almost every superhero. Yeah. And I'm not really sure how to write this better because I think they did the right thing. I, I just think like you should have spent a little more time on Peter and the problem is he has this Liz thing and you need that for the plot because that part plays out really well plot wise. Right, but in terms of character development, like he probably shouldn't get the date with her. And anyway, we'll go through we'll, we'll go through some of the parts that starts to fall apart. But um, the Spider-Man theme song, how could they not? Use, I know I said this last time, but how could they not use this as like the main theme of the movie? Yeah, I was gonna mention that it's a travesty that they only use it in the intro. Only thirty seconds. That like sucks. that's the song. Everyone wants that song. Um, this documentary thing, I think it starts off kind of funny and then it goes on for too long. And I think the part where it it starts to drag is when he's doing the thing where he's like, Oh my God, this is amazing. Look at the suit. Oh my God. It goes on for way too long. And then Mm -hmm. it's also not fun for the audience because we've already seen all of that. So, and I know like, I know you're not supposed to think of the movie like this, but I know Tom Holland has also like seen it. And so this is him just pretending to be excited. It's very fake. Does that make any sense? That makes Wait, sense. Wait, yeah. explain that again. I you cut it out for a bit for me. When during the documentary part where he um he's like acting super excited when the suit is oh, revealed to him and Yeah, yeah. And it's like we're going we're going through all those things again. I I went through all of that with Peter Parker when I watched Civil War. And now you're just you're doing it again. Yeah, and it feels like someone told him like act like a kid. Yeah. Like and, and they like, like ad-libbed he's like it. vlogging it like it's just something about the whole sequence is strange. Yeah. It starts off funny like when they're on the plane and he's never been on a plane before and it's and then the room is like way bigger than he thought, that sort of thing. 
Um, but yeah, once they get into the Civil War like recap, eh. Um, but maybe they felt like they needed that for audiences. Like maybe maybe when they test screened it, people like old people were like, "Well, why is he like this?" <laughs> um, all right. Uh, one thing was funny when Ned uh, puts Palpatine on his shoulder. Because yeah. remember, this is before Rise of Skywalker. Oh yeah. So like Palpatine <laughs> is different. Like Palpatine meant something else before that. Now he's something different. It's just kind of funny. Um, let's see. All right. So so they essentially they stole Miles Morales' character Genki, and and gave it to Peter. In the comics, Genki is like some type of Southeast Asian person, right? Yeah, I think so. So they basically did that. It's not the worst move in the world. What do you guys think? Would he have been better off without like a buddy? I mean, you need someone for him to bounce stuff off of. Like, yeah, because the whole he's movie, he's. I don't like him when he's on his own any more than when he's with his buddy. I like Ned. I like Ned. I wish they would have come up with like something else though. They definitely just ripped off Genki. Um, but I like that he has him. You know what would have been nice? I'm I'm still a firm believer that College Peter is definitely the best version of him. I would have liked this had they included maybe like replace Ned with Harry Osborn, so that way you can have the friendship there, and you can start setting up all the Osborn plots for the future. You know, that's actually I didn't even think of that. That's actually a great idea. I know. See, the problem is. You Ned has to be as much of a loser as Peter, but you could have done that. You could have done that properly. Um, you also, if you wanted to, you could have made him a little cooler than Peter, and like he's getting dates and stuff while Peter's constantly like missing out because he's being Spider Man. I mean, that's mm-hmm. classic Spider Man stuff, right? Um, cool. So like, I yeah, I think you're right, Ever. I think that's probably the right thing they should have done. They don't need Ned; they need Harry. Um, but I guess they and didn't want to do they're all, Well, they're obviously setting up Miles Morales for the future, like at least a little bit. So you can save him for that. And you can also, yeah. like, he sold Avengers Tower in this movie. Why don't you just make it so that Oscorp bought it to make it Oscorp Tower? Oscorp, possibly the Baxter building. Um, okay. what This this MJ thing. I don't, I don't dislike her. I actually like how much she's in the movie in this. But that thing at the end where they do the name, where her name's Michelle. Mm-hmm. What do you guys think about that? I don't really, um, I don't really mind that much. I guess she's she's I, good I in the role. Yeah, I don't mind her as a character, and I don't mind the actress, and I don't mind what they did, and I kind of like that she isn't the central character at first. She's just somebody. Um. The only thing I'll say is that I I don't know if I want to see her as a constant. Well, they're only making three Spider-Man movies, right? As far as we know, then I think the okay. deal is up. Yeah, because I don't know if I want her to be like appearing. I, their relationship, and I'm kind of thinking of the next one from what I remember too, but their relationship like kind of st- – stagnates i feel like like i don't see the same as like toby mcguire and um uh what's her name Kristen dunst christian dunst christian dunst yeah i don't see i don't see the i don't see them having the staying power or the there was know. a maturity to toby mcguire and christian dunst's relationship because they were older and you're able to do more with it where when they're young like this it kind of pigeonholes them you see what i'm saying yeah Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and I just don't like. Why can't her name be Mary Jane? Why does it have to be Michelle? And then she's like, "But it is MJ still." I was like, "Well, okay. Why don't you tell us what the J means then?" Michelle Jane. <laughs> um, <laughs> Michelle Jones. Then they do this thing with the clock where he keeps looking at the clock, and like I think what they're trying to tell you is he's so excited, like he doesn't care about school anymore. He just wants to stare at the clock until he can run out and be Spider Man, like a kid, like you know, who just finished school or something. Um, but the, I don't think they do it right because they show the clock a couple times and then it should be like him just looking at the clock in a bunch of different classes all day long. Instead, it like it takes its time. And then, and then when it actually lets out, it does, it's not like a big, like I'm free. He just kind of, 
is out. Yeah, he just, like, walks out of school. And -hmm. then the next sequence isn't even all that interesting. Like, it's funny, him, like, trying to be, like, protecting the neighborhood. Well, no, the next sequence is he goes and buys a sandwich. Yeah. So that's... Oh, yeah! So that's (laughs) where I'm like, okay, so how big of a rush was he in to be... Like, you seem like you were setting that up and then you didn't do it. Um, I, I don't mind the sandwich scene, but I do wonder, like... You could have moved that. You could have moved that out of that spot and made the whole like I want to finish school as, po- as soon as possible to become Spider Man in the afternoon to do my after school thing. You could have done that and then move the the restaurant deli thing. You could have moved that like as a breakfast thing before school. Right. Yeah, I as agree. As he's like texting happy and whatever, and that yeah. would have made more sense because you need to set him up for when he saves him in the next part. But. Um, so what do you guys think about the suit up montage? I thought it was pretty good compared to the like Amazing Spider Man ones. Those were terrible. Yeah, I would agree. Music, and <laughs> you know, there's a Stanley cameo, um, and then you see the bank fight, which I thought was pretty entertaining. Entertaining, yeah. But you know, one of my like one of my gripes with this version of Peter is. Spider-Man's supposed to be kind of quippy and a little sarcastic. You can tell he's trying. It doesn't really do it for me, though. Like, it seems... I thought he was fine. I don't want him to do any more. I'm, like, people, people overstate his quippiness. Spider-Man doesn't yeah, need to be like... Don't overdo it, but I don't well, know. For some reason, I just don't like He quipped a lot. He, he quipped a lot in that scene. You guys aren't the Avengers. Hey, Thor and Hulk, finally nice to meet you guys. And then oh, he's just yeah. saying things the whole time. The other thing is I think it's very hard to have a character like be quippy without it coming off as cringy. Because like, you know who quipped a lot? Andrew Garfield. Yeah. Like he fucking said shit every two seconds. I think And like Yeah. It was like mediocre. I think Toby Maguire had the he, he didn't have the best lines, but I think he had the right amount. And Toby and Andrew Garfield was like way too much. And this mm. one is okay. Like I would tone it down a little bit because his whole thing is just like he talks so much. He talks all the time, even when he's Peter. So, um, but I didn't, I don't know. I think people really overstate the whole quippiness of Spider Man. It's like having a good one liner is not, it's not something you can count on every single time, the entire time he's fighting. I don't want to see that. Right. Um, yeah, but so, this did let me, this did lead me to think about this film doesn't really have a good inciting incident. Like, this is the inciting incident. That he blows up the sandwich shop? That the, they're using Chitauri tech in the bank, essentially. Yeah, but but even the way... This is one of the things I was going to talk about. The way he, like, goes to the next step is, like, strange. Because, like, he should have no idea what the hell to do. But instead, he's, like, intercepting arms deals and, like... Yeah, yeah, he tries to... No, because he's at the party and then he sees the explosion, right? Yeah. And that's how he ends up at the arms deal. And then he gets caught by the vulture. And, like, so he starts to try to find the vulture. Yeah, but then, then he, like, you know, he there's, like, that sequence later when he interrogates um, Childish Gambino. Is that who Aaron he is? Aaron Davis. Is that his name? That's who he plays, but, yeah. That's... The Childish Gambino is him, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> um. So, like, I don't know. It just... Uh, and then, and then, okay, but there's a sequence right there between, like, when he's on his own. When I like when he goes and he intercepts the arms deal. I like when he fights the vulture. I like that the vulture's kind of terrifying. I like that he has that sense of being terrifying from the vulture. I like when Iron Man comes and is, like, not actually there. Um, but then, like, you move past that and it's back to just Peter. And I'm like, I, I want to see more of the other stuff. Because Peter doesn't, he doesn't have enough. I mean, he's not horrible. But there's not enough that he's doing that interests me about him. Do you guys think we're going to see an Uncle Ben? At any God, point? I hope not. not. Well, I mean, because you got to assume, like, did Peter, like, have a direct hand in his death? You know, I, I give they this turn movie Tony props Stark for into his not Uncle doing ben. that. Do they, though? Tony Stark teaches him with great power must come great responsibility. That's kind of what he tells him in this movie. And then he dies. He does, yeah. Well, he and, dies like, later. and Peter's there. 
And then in the next movie, Peter's like got PTSD because I guess Tony yeah. died and yeah. he needs to live That's up it. to him. So Uncle Ben's death, like what, what happened there? What do you think? He just died, like cancer or something? <laughs> He, he was out I mean, at the club <laughs> and someone pulled a gun and he was like, hey, kill me, bitch. <laughs> and he got shot. Yeah, I don't know. Um, so then he crawls into his room and Ned catches him, which is really funny. I think that was that's a really yeah. funny scene. That um, is a funny – and he drops the Death Star. Yeah. And then did you notice like I saw an opportunity here. At one point he's like eating in the Thai restaurant and they show a picture of Spider-Man like linking him to the explosion. But it's a picture of like a porta potty. Uh, like him like with toilet paper on his foot and i'm thinking that would be a good opportunity to set up the photography thing where he's like where did they get that picture that's an awful picture yeah but instead it just doesn't as i said the movie like it really doesn't want peter to kind of have his own thing yeah instead it's very much like peter's going to be reacting to what these other people do not doing something of his own right and I, I really like the origin retelling through the form of Ned's questions where he's asking like all he kind of is asking like pretty practical questions that I like people would like you're a spider. Does that mean you lay eggs like do you shoot web out of your butt? Like what does that mean? <laughs> yeah. I mean, these are legitimate questions. I also yeah. th- I also thought it was a little um, a little silly that the teacher was talking about the Sokovia Accords. Because they have a few little references to that kind of stuff yeah, in the movie. I like the idea that they would change the history books, but like I just don't think that that That's would also already pretty be pretty recent. Yeah. yeah. Like like are people like teaching nine about eleven Trump right just now? now or like has only for a little bit been like in like yeah. textbooks. Yeah. And again, like the school stuff, I like a lot of the school stuff. And when they're playing that uh, F Mary Kill game. That's pretty mm-hmm. funny. Like, that's actually hilarious that they would be doing that. Um, yeah, and, like, when Captain America's on the workout video. Yeah, and he, like, Hannibal you know, all the, hilarious in this. all the little things, like, he's like, my friend, you're a PE coach, and then he, like, points to the wrong side. He's, you know, he's not standing <laughs> yeah. on – it's funny. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure this guy's a war criminal now, but it's required by the state. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I, that's, all that stuff's good. It has nothing to do with Peter Parker, but it's all funny. Um, yeah. Like the the movie nails that part. Um, okay, Flash Thompson. He he's better in the next film. He's really yeah. stupid in this. He's like over yeah. the top. Peter Parker walks into the house. I mean, this guy is like no threat to Flash, right? In terms of popularity or girls, like they don't they're not after the same girl. They don't why even don't, interact. Yeah. Why don't you like have a Flash trying to ask Liz out or something? And you think that it's over for Peter, and then she rejects him. And, and you know, like, he hears that he, she wants Peter to ask or something, which is even that you don't really need. But, um, like, he walks into the house party, and he's like, hey, Penis Parker. And then Peter is, is, like, noticeably absent from the party for a long time. And he starts getting people to chant Penis Parker. <laughs> yeah, he's, it's it's yeah. it's they, – they clearly were like, this is what the character needs to do. And they decided that that's what he is without thinking about how it fits into the world they were creating. Yeah. And how old is that kid, Tony Tony Revolori? Because I wouldn't be the surprised actor? if he's like 30. <laughs> I don't know. Let's fucking Tony let's Revolori. It out. Um, born 19. 19- oh, he's younger than me. He's just, he's just a, he's 24. Yeah, he's just a kind of a weird looking kid. <laughs> What's his uh, name? His name, he was born as Anthony Quinones in Anaheim, California. When did he change his name? He adopted Revolori, the surname of his paternal grandmother. Okay. Whatever. Um, all right, so yeah, I don't, I don't like Flash in this film, and I don't think he really works. He, I think they're trying to make a modern bully, and modern bullies bully you on social media. And they don't like chant and your they name. They don't call out, yeah, like penis part. And the other thing is, like, the bullying is less like they attack you and more like they just say, like, no one's going to talk to this person. Yeah. And it's like, how would you get a whole party to be like, penis parker? Like, who would chant that? Like, what's the point? Yeah. He's not yeah. even there. <laughs> um, okay, so we. <laughs> <laughs> Just chant 
chanting for the sake of yeah. the chanting. So we see uh, Shocker. That's the guy that was in that one movie th- that you guys liked. Um, he's like the the budget Tom Hardy. Um, what's, what's that movie like? He was he became upgrade. yeah upgrade yeah that's the one. I really like him as an actor. Yeah, I almost wonder. Remember how my idea of like you start out with Shocker and his arc is to become Electro. Yeah, like that guy. I forget his name, but he could have been like a cool, mean, nasty Electro. I agree. I really liked him. I'd forgotten he was killed, and I, I'm a little disappointed that they killed him off. Well, I like the other actor more. And Everett, if you remember from Sopranos, that's uh, that's the rapper guy. Really? Bo Bokeen Woodbine. I always get his name wrong. I don't know. It could be Wo- Woodbine Bokeen or something. I don't know. Bovine. I don't know. Bokeen. I'm gonna just type in Bokeen. <laughs> Damn, I didn't recognize him. Woodbine. Oh, I was right. It's Bokeem Woodbine. Uh, yeah. So he was. He was what? Massive. <laughs> the surprise in your voice. He was massive in in Sopranos, and I think he was in Boardwalk Empire. But he, you know, he was. Yeah. Anyway. Um. He's a cool guy. He's he's almost fifty years old, but he looks young. You know, black don't crack. Um, but I I didn't like him in this. He like his character has really? nothing. He basically gets tossed the shocker thing. He's like, "You're the shocker now," and he's like, "I've never shown any interest in this, but okay." And then, and then he just like, I don't know, gets wrecked, right? Yeah, he gets by Ned pretty much. Yeah, Ned gets him, and then he's also on the ferry, and he kind of just, like, is not really a factor there. He, he has to run away. I'm not a yeah. big fan of the fact that he only uses one gauntlet. I well, prefer you think, to be like, two. Are they, are they setting that up? or? Also, well, Shocker's also a pretty think... stupid villain. Yeah, how does he, like, pick shit up if he uses two gauntlets? Like, he can't, like, open a door. Well, it seems like it, it has to engage, but... Well, that's the whole thing, is that... It's not supposed to be like a punch power glove. It's supposed to be shock waves. Like you can still use the grip of your hands while firing them off. Yeah, it's not it's not great. Um Also, I think I mentioned this the last time we reviewed this movie, but have you guys noticed that that gauntlet is made from one of Crossbones gauntlets? No, I didn't notice that. That actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. yeah. And I was about to say I really like I like all the added tech like history wise and the way um like ev- the chitauri tech is in everything that's so cool yeah um, and there it's it's because it's establishing rules to the universe and respecting previous stuff but the thing about vulture's wings it seems like they were taking like plates off of the leviathans but should didn't they have like methods of flight because vulture is using like a giant propeller or two He's giant using propellers. Like turbines right yeah. turbines yeah and don't you think that the, shouldn't he be using Chitari tech? I mean, that would have made more sense, but it does make more. Yeah, I mean, it does. It's weird that he's using like old school technology for flight. It seems like they adapted the power source and some of the mechanisms into the wings, not necessarily like yeah, the method maybe. of flight. Because so, remember, that's what explodes at the end is his power source. Oh yes, I remember. Um, as a homeowner, watching Spider-Man run through all these fences, like this is not – remember, 2016, I had just gotten married, no house or anything. I, I'm looking at this now like this guy's a douche. He's literally destroying <laughs> – yep. like this, this – that sucks. Yep. And if it's like someone like me who doesn't have – like I'm just getting my savings together now. Like I don't want to fucking replace the shed. You crazy because that asshole ran into it. Like, what the fuck? Why are you running through yep. backyards? There's a street right next to you. Imagine, like, you spend three years building a treehouse up in that tree, and it just falls over because some dumbass tried yeah, to swing he, from he it. Pulled the, yeah, he pulled that treehouse down. Anyway, I, I really like the vulture appearance. I think he looks terrifying in this sequence. Um, and I think it's really cool that he the way he, like, lifts him up and throws him down. He doesn't really know what he's dealing with. Um, but vulture's plenty scary, don't you guys think? Yeah, Yeah. I agree. He's incredibly scary. And that's part of what's like super cool about him. And also one of the things I like, even though Spider-Man doesn't showcase this this as much, in most of the previous movies, Spider-Man is like the guy swooping in from the sky. Okay? Right. In this movie, Vulture is the one who has the high ground, like the permanent high ground. And And he uses it better than Goblin did. 
or like Electro did where he's like really like swooping in. And I think that's like a really cool like effect to have. It would have been even better if this Spider-Man like swung around a bit more, but I I you know, you know um, I've been saying that I really want that and I think that it's okay for this first movie. And I don't dislike what they did with the second movie. I'm just saying my point is like it's time for him to be in the city. Yeah, that, that's what I was going to say. Like I really miss the whole building swing. But it kind of makes me think uh, the whole like plot of this movie like, while I was watching, I was thinking to myself, if they had based this in the city of New York, imagine how different it would be. Can you imagine what would happen if instead of the plane crashing at Coney Island, Peter Parker had to maneuver it through buildings and crashed it like in Central Park or something? Like imagine him fighting well, Vulture in the like the urban jungle. Of I the, mean, Central Park is an idea. The problem with it is everyone's going to see. Like, you can't have that character moment with Adrian Toomes and Peter Parker. They all have to keep their masks on, and no one's... Like, he can't leave the vulture there. And also, like, People I don't will know. Die. I don't trust the, his ability to, like, manage that. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, isn't it interesting? Remember in Civil War, which I did rewatch, he kind of had a little bit of a New York accent, and here he doesn't anymore. I would have liked for him to have like a kind of a Queens accent. Maybe they didn't bit. think he could keep it up. Probably with couldn't. The lines. Yeah, he probably couldn't. <laughs> um, so uh, I like Michael Keaton when he like he comes up to the Tom Hardy guy and he he like does the thing with his hair like that's pure Michael Keaton, and then he kills him by accident, which is fine. <laughs> I like the Tinkerer too. I I think he's funny. Um, mm-hmm. Then we... He gets a little annoying sometimes, though. I think he was starting to, like, overstay his welcome, and then the movie really didn't show him that much anymore except for exposition, so... Um, like, he didn't have any more comedy Who? beats. The Tinker. The Tinker. Yeah, okay, yes. Um. So then Peter, like, jumps on the truck, and he gets stuck in the warehouse, and he starts talking to Karen. Right? Is Dude, it, can, it I is make a, Karen, can I make right? a note yes. about that real quick? Yes. Uh-huh. Um... I said this last time. Can you imagine how easy it would have been had he just removed the the phase shift rocks and trapped Vulture in that truck? Yeah. Yeah. I like... Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. I got this mixed up. The The Karen part is when he starts... He's, he's like... She's messing with his settings because he, he like skipped the protocol, the training protocol. Yeah, and he's like, choose the web for me. And, or like kill mode engaged or whatever. So this is the part for me where the movie s- goes from win to draw. I agree. When he gets stuck in the damn thing. But, but yeah, but not even that. It's it's the uh, it's the part where it's like I don't know. It's hard to say because like I know Emerson, you didn't play the PS4 Spider Man, but Everett and I did. So the idea of like all these tricky gadgets, I've become accustomed to it. As like a Spider-Man thing. I'm like okay with that now. Whereas when I first saw this movie, I did not like that at all. For me, it isn't the gadgets that like takes me off. It's the way the story just kind of stops. And like instead of following the like threads that I like, Vulture, the gang, Iron Man, like the world. It goes into like this other area where it literally feels like the movie's like we just need to put him somewhere. Right, right. And yeah. so, well, no. Okay, so they, they put him somewhere in the sense that they put him where he's clearly in over his head is is the idea because it's proving that he's not ready. Um, and a lot of the, a lot of people complained about the the tech part overcoming and overbearing the, the Peter Parker part. And like they felt like he, he was just Iron Man Jr. What do you guys think? Well, the way I see it, it's that's what I was talking more when I said that Peter Parker needs to evolve into that state. If you give year one Peter Parker an essential, like a, basically the Iron Spider armor with an AI uplink and like a full heads up display, he be, like he becomes more reliant on it instead of like using it to benefit his character. Well, that and also he doesn't feel like friendly neighborhood Spider Man. He feels like Avenger Spider Man. Yeah. Um. So the the problem with that is, is 
okay, don't you think that it's valid for what the theme of the movie is, which is like him coming of age, whatever? Don't you think that it's a valid thing to write that he's like he he doesn't follow the training protocol and now he's in over his head and like the movie makes that point pretty well, I would say. Mm -hmm. You know, for for what the, the theme of the movie, like I think it it works in that context. The problem is that's just not what I want to watch Spider-Man doing. Um, and I don't know, like, are they, are they wrong for that? I would say they should get a pass. Problem is, it, like, as Emerson said, this kind of thing continues. So he, uh, so like the vulture truck fight is great because of the vulture mostly. Yes. Um, and then he, and then he ends up in the, uh, thing, the, the warehouse. The and yeah. he's like talking to Karen and like you said like it's not it's like why do, he doesn't need an AI to talk to Well but it's it's not just the AI I agree that the like that's part of it but like don't you guys that whole sequence is just boring to me because he's literally sitting in a room like waiting to escape so he can go to the next thing he does You're supposed to say oh isn't it funny how he's like being a kid and and like talking to the person about his kid problems and like that's what you're supposed to say I don't think it landed for most people, that part anyway. But still, many people still love this. But I agree this this is where the trouble, like, you can kind of point to it. Yeah, whatever. You know what this kind of reminds me of? Something that I think Tom Holland and Andrew Garfield did pretty badly that Tobey Maguire, I think, did really well was that Tobey Maguire had a lot of silent scenes where they conveyed what was happening to you based on expression, based on action. He didn't have to constantly talk to anybody. Yeah. He didn't have to have like this ADD mindset. Whoa. You could convey it really like <laughs> fluidly. Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree that it was character driven where this is definitely more plot driven. Um they do have character in it though. Like he clearly is like a petulant child that that you you need to like wait your turn. You're not ready. Tony Stark is telling you you're not ready. You need to listen. That's a pretty relatable thing for kids. Um it's just it it's like we don't have that sweetness that Tobey Maguire had and that Andrew Garfield lacked. Can you imagine if it was Tobey Maguire stuck in that warehouse? Like you don't think he'd be sitting there like, yeah, well, you know, she's kind of cute. I like that girl. I don't know. What do you think? And like I just don't – I don't know. With him, I feel like yeah. he would immediately start trying to figure out ways to get out. Yeah. he he, he and But the – as a whole, I do not like the idea of him just getting locked in the room. Like, I'd rather he's, like, doing something else, dealing with something else. Why didn't he try to just do the codes from the beginning? Because the movie decided he needed to be in there. I'm... Yeah, anyway, so, <laughs> as a teacher, when they when they have a competition and, like, a kid is missing... That's not like, hey, we need to find this kid. That's like, stop everything, call the police, call Aunt May. No one's moving until we find this kid. And so, like, it's kind of, I mean, they went to the competition. You have to understand, yeah, like, won. the movie should have, the movie should have had them uh, be kicked out or whatever you call yeah. it, disqualified for not having, like, yeah. he, remember, he's There's supposed a to punishment. not get, yeah, he's supposed to not get what he wants. Instead, it's like, yeah, he didn't he didn't make it to the thing, but it's okay they won, so no consequence. Like, uh, no, he should they should have lost because of him. And it, it would have just put like, I mean, it gives flash ammunition. MJ is like, what's up with this guy? Like, what's wrong with him? Like, she's watching him closer now. Um, Liz kind of like dislikes him. I feel like Liz yeah. doesn't. Like, I feel like Liz. Maybe could have, maybe they could have agreed that they were going to go on the date when Peter like came back to the team, and then once he does, once he like gets him disqualified, Flash asks her out and she says yes, or like for homecoming. Yeah, that's not a bad idea because he doesn't need to go with Liz. The problem is uh, you have to find out that who Liz's dad is, which you could still do. You just can't. Yeah, but yeah, it would be a different beat. Like it would have there would have it would be be different. Yeah. Um. But still, you could do it. Or maybe she could forgive him, something like that. Um, okay. So, 
All right, so then there's this Washington Monument thing, which again, like, I don't hate this action sequence, but I I don't like, um, sorry, I'm getting texted. I just don't find it that interesting. Why? Because it's like, okay, there's this bomb, and I, so what is it, that, that, that they put it through the x-ray that triggers it? Yeah, actually, yeah. I have a gripe with well, that. Well, it was decaying on its own, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, but it, that's my that's my problem with it is that the entire time they had this thing, it was perfectly harmless. He, they held it, they kept it in their pockets, nothing happened. Then the minute he finds out it's a bomb, it starts degrading. Like it burns a hole through the mattress. It, it, it specifically glowing. says when exposed to radiation. Yeah. So I'm assu- like I didn't understand. I was like, it's he's acting like the thing's going to explode at any second now. But I also saw them like it gets X-rayed. Which is, yeah. I assumed, what triggered it. But then I don't understand later in the film with Vulture. Because his just detonates. Yeah. And also, they detonate... There was also a different detonation, wasn't there? <laughs> Isn't there a different, um, another one? There was one detonation, and it doesn't make sense because it's in Ned's backpack in well, the I mean, elevator. I mean, in the movie, because I, I remember like looking at... The differences in explosions, like Ned's backpack explodes in such a uniquely weird way that doesn't kill anybody. Like, how does something explode on your back and no one gets hurt? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But the elevator's like like about to collapse. It doesn't really work. I mean, unless it's like a directional charge, because there are like directional explosives. That will yeah, like what happened on the ferry, how it like right the the ferry. The ferry was the other explosion. That one was like out of control. And the vultures is also like much different than either one of those explosions. So it's whatever. There's not a lot of consistency there. Yeah. So anyway, he saves them. I don't mind him saving them. Also, how is Peter supposed to kiss her in that moment? Is he supposed to like rip down his mask and? I don't fucking know. I, it, there's, some, it, there's like people everywhere. Like. Uh... But I like that he saves Liz, and you know, in my version where he gets them disqualified, like. Oh, that still wouldn't work, but... I mean, what, they get disqualified, teacher feels bad, hey, let's go on a sightseeing tour, they end up there, and then... I'm just trying to think of a way, which I can... I'm sure there is a way, I just can't think of it off the top of my head, because I'm not writing a script, but... um, Just a way for them to, like, be mad at Peter, but then to still go on a date to Homecoming with Liz. Um, Maybe you could just see Flash ask her, and she could, like, (laughs) reject him also, but, like... Kind of in an upset way. It's still bad news for Peter. Anyway. I mean, um, you, you know what might be a good way? Like, maybe show, like, the bus ride back, sort of. So that way you can you can see them reconcile. Maybe they can bond over their love of science. So you can see Peter's, like, intelligence a little bit. And then you kind of fix the relationship that way. Because they don't really show off his intelligence that well, in my opinion. They need more yeah, of that. He could apologize for getting... Like, he could genuinely be like, I'm really sorry. And she could ask him, and and then he could like sort of change the subject by asking her to homecoming, and you know. Anyway, um, one of the worst scenes, in the in my opinion, is probably this Aaron Davis scene with uh, what's his name. He was in Community. I, I keep was wanting to like say Miles Donald Morales. Glover? Yeah, Donald Glover. <laughs> <laughs> no, because he was gonna play Miles Morales at one point. Um, yeah, this Aaron Davis yeah. scene, like, what is he? Is he trying to play him high? Like, what is what is going on here? I don't know. It was very weird. Very it's weird. It's not funny. It's not interesting. All, the only information that he offers them is like, yeah, they talk. They like are around this area or something like that. It's not real intel. You know, there's a couple Easter eggs Whatever. to him being the prowler in this movie that I didn't notice the first time. Did you hear what I said? Yeah. I, um, yeah, so there's a few Easter eggs that I didn't notice the first time. Um, when they're looking at his dossier, like when she scans his face, it says his alias is the Prowler. Who? Karen? And also when, yeah, when Karen okay. like is looking back over the footage, she says he's the Prowler. Also, when he's at the arms deal and they're like telling him all the merchandise they have, like like black hole grenades and Sokovia weapons and stuff like that, they mention like grapple climbers and he's like, really? I want to see that. And then Spider-Man busts in. Which I think oh, is an interesting cool. nod to the fact that he's the yeah. power. I mean, he doesn't. I don't buy him as anything other than like some type of drug addict. I don't like him at all, really. 
And I don't really like the idea of the Prowler, to be honest. I just saw him in the Miles Morales game. Not a huge fan. Um, yeah, but I just think that this whole thing takes too long. I don't really want to see him come back if they decide to do a Miles Morales where it's his uncle. Do you guys? Maybe they'll kill him. No, I don't want to see more. I'm of just it. completely turned off. I don't care. Um, yeah. and, and I didn't like even like they're trying to play the funny beats where like Spider-Man's using the enhanced interrogation mode. I didn't like that either. I was just like, eh, I, I thought that was funny. I, I, that it's just more of that tech stuff overbearing and, you know, it's not Spider-Man. It is. It could be funny. It's just not Spider-Man. Um, okay. So then we have the fairy fight, which I thought went pretty well. And uh, we see Matt Gargan, mm-hmm. which, like, this is another guy who I don't really care to see more of. Like, you're clearly setting him up to be Scorpion. Scorpion's not that interesting of a villain. And he's not that interesting of, like, a person on screen. He seems kind of small. <laughs> don't you guys yeah. think? Yeah. Also, remind me, isn't that the guy that played Voss in Far Cry 4? Or 3? Mm, that I, I don't know. I think you might be right. So the FBI shows up, Vulture like goes crazy, and then he says something interesting. As Peter's like trying to pull off his Jatari gun, he Vulture says, "You deal you're dealing with something you don't understand." Which I'm assuming he's talking about the technology like he knows that that thing's going to blow if Peter like messes with it. I don't know why it blows because it doesn't seem to have any rhyme or reason to it, but yeah, uh, well, it implies that Vulture knows what he's going to do. The Vulture Didn't he hit it underst- with a taser web? It, like, electrified the thing. I don't know. I, I don't know. It doesn't say why it exploded, other than it became unstable. But but the point is, the Vulture understands that it is unstable and why it's going to... Like, he knows it's going to explode. So he basically bails. Uh, Iron Man comes and helps him. I like it. I like the next scene where they argue. Yeah, I think that's a really yeah, good scene. He- but once again, this is why, like... It's difficult for me because Peter it doesn't really stand on his own. The scenes I like the most are the scenes where other people are interacting with him. Yeah, it's true. And I think that continues. Like, I don't think – I can't even remember scenes in Far From Home where he's, like, on his own. It's always – Yeah, he's he's yeah. interacting with Beck or Fury or – Yeah. You know what's um, kind of funny? The, the Iron Man says a line to him saying, what if someone had died that would have been on you? At one point, he webs a guy to the back of the ferry, and then once it explodes and it splits apart, <laughs> along with the cars, he gets sucked into the water. <laughs> and he definitely died. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So he lost the Stark internship. I like this scene where he's sad and Aunt May, like, she like, I knew, I know about this, I know about that. Like, yeah, I wish the movie would have like kind of address that like she clearly got a call that her child was missing Mm -hmm. from the field trip and then he just came home and they both just said nothing that's weird yeah Um, also she doesn't seem like the type that would just be like i don't want to i don't want to upset him like she would confront him yeah like what happened what is going on yeah and by the way you're never leaving the house again you fucking weirdo what's like you were never like this before (laughs) and now you're going insane um and you know he's like young aunt may or do you prefer like older? I mean, Aunt I'm May? a big Marissa Tomei fan, but I mean, she's fine. I the but she, oh, yeah, as, she as with everything, <laughs> nice as with everything we've been dealing with, like every character is like set to their universe. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like if you put Tobey Maguire's Aunt May in this one, it would be like out of place. No, she it could work. She, I mean, she doesn't have to be. If she was like the age of the first movie. Honestly, I, I kind of prefer Andrew Garfield's Aunt May. Sally Field? Yeah, I like her. She could have done this one, too. There, they All the Aunt Mays were good. Couldn't really, like... Couldn't say that was the problem with any of those movies. Um, mm. Yeah, and they all could have done what Aunt May is doing here. The only thing is, like, the, the tie waiter wouldn't have hit on her if she was <laughs> Sally Field or Rosemary Harris. Um, that'd be That'd be so... Funny. Yeah, and like, you know, she remember she was flirting with Tony in the beginning, and then now she doesn't like him, which I also, to me, if if that was real life, I would see that as like she's definitely going to date Tony later. Like that seems like how. Yeah, but instead they pivoted it to 
she starts dating happy instead well happy. it's okay yeah it, i just it's just kind of a weird turn on that i wonder why she didn't like tony um all right and so she helps him get dressed for the thing and like i like that she's teaching him how to dance that's good so he gets to the house and you know the music's playing and as soon as Michael Keaton opens the door. He's perfect for this. He's so perfect for this. As soon as he opens the door, like the music stops. And I think Peter like plays it or Toby or Tom Holland plays it really well too. Like this is probably his best scenes as an actor. Are you guys still there? Yeah. yeah. No, oh, okay. I'm just listening. <laughs> like, I think that and yeah. the car ride to the dance are like two of the best sequences in the entire movie. Yeah, yeah. I mean they're like directly related, yeah. Um <laughs> So it's funny because, like, you know, the movie's really funny in the sense that as soon as it's her dad, I remember when I first saw it, I thought he was there to, like, ambush Peter. Um, and, it like, you know, he had, like, murdered Liz and her mom or something. Um, but when you see it and you come in and it's like, oh, it's kind of normal, the whole audience is like, so how is she black? And, the, and then right as you're like thinking that the black mom walks in and you're like, okay, all right, all right, you got me, movie got me. Um, so I yeah, I like how he hands her the boutonniere or was it a corsage? Yeah, the corsage. He yeah. just like hands it over, doesn't smile in the photos, is like totally disturbed. Um, really funny. And then the car scene because the girl that plays Liz, like, she's a little older, you could tell. And uh, she doesn't really earn her place, I feel like, until the scene where she's, like, where she basically throws him under the bus without realizing it. She, like, yeah. she plays it perfectly. Yeah, I know. It's so good. He's like, I wasn't it's there so for two good. minutes. She's like, yeah, you were. You were there for two minutes because you always leave like you always do every single time. And he's like, no, no. And Michael Keaton's like looking at him. Yeah, he's like, what the fuck? <laughs> Good old Spider Man. <laughs> That's a great and like even the close up where the the street light, light changes. turns green. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Michael Keaton was perfect for this. I'm so glad yeah. they picked him. I know. I love that scene. I love it. <laughs> so he goes to the prom, and I like the part where he like pulls him back. I'm gonna give him the old dad talk, and yeah, he's like, and I'll kill it's... your whole family. Yeah, I'll kill. <laughs> but that's important though, because we've established two things, which is going to be like my final argument as to why this movie ultimately fails. Well, I mean, it doesn't fail, but it's not what it should have been. He's he's an acknowledged that he understands how unstable the the um, <laughs> I could already explosives see will be right. Yeah, when he's in the truck fight, as soon as Peter's there, he understands like I don't I don't know what the fuck Spider Man is. And I don't know what he's doing here, but I do know one thing that when I'm trying to build a heist and there's like some super powered person that's attached to Iron Man, this is bad news. I'm going to bug out. He understands that. And then here he talks. And then also when he kills the shocker guy, he says the same thing. Family comes first. Like nothing will jeopardize what I'm doing here. Someone. Have I'm a assuming doorbell? Everett. <laughs> so uh. he, he's talked about like family over mission. Right. Yeah, sorry right. about that. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna talk about the, what happens in the movie. But if you skip ahead there towards the end, he goes full like, "I'm gonna heist this thing no matter what it costs." Yes. Yes. And, and, it, and that, that just doesn't jive with any the rest of the movie at all. And the way it resolves and everything. Yeah. But yeah, he, he's literally right now saying like, "I will kill your family if you ever turn up again." Because you're getting in the way of my business. He's not like business at all costs, no matter what the risk. He's clearly very practical about the risks. Um, so anyway, he he bails on Liz, and then he chases the vulture. He there's like the fight with the shocker where he kind of doesn't. He beats Peter because he catches him by surprise, but then Ned helps, and you know it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he ends up at the lair of the vulture. Yeah. yeah. Where um, he, he you know he does the thing where he sets the glider to. I actually like that scene, and I like where he's like that. Like Peter's like, you haven't even hit me, and Michael Keaton's like, that's true, but I wasn't really trying to. That part's good. It's the part where he saves himself in the rubble, where people try to because it's like uh, he sees like the half spider mask, and they're like, oh, it's a reference to Ditko. That's so amazing. It's like really, what's amazing about how the, that scene is written? I'm more for, impressed by the how panicked he sounds. Like I thought that was good acting. Well, yeah, he starts crying like a baby, which is good acting. 
He does a good job there. And then it's like, okay, so how does the scene resolve itself? He gets up. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. And, he, does, like, he does it like by himself with pure will. He doesn't use Stark Tech. He doesn't he hadn't have anybody else holding him up. He does it himself. Which I right. think is a like, good finalization of character development. I mean, couldn't he have done that the entire time? I mean, yeah, but it's, it's a movie. <laughs> no, it's I mean, come on. I mean, we're talking about superhero strength, right? And it, he he exhibits it many times. Like we see how strong he is many different times and then here he is crying like a baby it's like okay you're scared i get that and then he's like come on spider-man come on come on spider-man and it's like but you're strong either you can lift it or you can't I mean, and then I'm, I'm i'm trying to come up with excuses to like how to explain that and i was gonna say maybe peter parker hasn't really had his strength tested but then literally no. a couple scenes before he had to hold a fairy together yeah. so you know no. how strong he is i just think that this movie doesn't need that scene I think he gets under the rocks and he just gets out pretty quick. Like he, you know, he just like jumps out. He could do that. You wouldn't question it. We don't need to spend all that time on him. Like, I don't know, whatever he was doing, <laughs> whatever that a come on Spider Man thing was like. I don't know what is what is the psychology of that. So he he has to go into like his alter ego in order to perform physical strength that he has. Is that what? I mean, you know, I don't know what it's trying to say. Yeah, I, it's it is strange. Like you it's know, they thought pandering. it would be like a feel good moment. Yeah, yeah. it's clearly fan service. That, that's the, I mean, the worst maybe part. Maybe it's of like it. cheer for him and he'll be stronger. Yeah. Like maturity, maybe. Like he starts off like crying like a child, and then he gains his composure and grows up. I don't know, some weird BS like. Yeah, that. in in like a minute of the scene, like I don't know, it it doesn't need it. That should be out on an edit. Um, With great power comes great responsibility. He could have just been like, I got to get out of here or something, and then pushed the rocks up and just went after the vo- Think about how long he was down there and the vultures just like waiting for him <laughs> outside. I mean, he was just perched outside, yeah. Yeah. All right, so anyway, he, I think this plane sequence is really good. I like it. Mm-hmm. Um, so he uses the air suction thing on with his wings. If you notice, he has much bigger wings this time. Yep. Um which the figure I'm getting is not the figure I'm getting is like the original wings, not the giant wings. It's just too big. Um, so he does the air suction thing. He goes in. We get to see all that memorabilia and like collector's items things. It's cool. I like it. I like it a lot. And then Peter gets on there, and um, the like reflection of the plane. Jade said a thing. She's like, "How did how does the plane not have a sensor to know that it's being like torn apart in the fight?" I don't yeah. know. It, it also doesn't really matter because it crashes like seconds later. Well, didn't they fake the signal with that decoy drone? They might have. Yeah. It it really doesn't matter. I didn't think that that was big of a plot hole. Um, so he's fighting the whole time, and I, like I like when he's like just a normal homecoming on the outside of a plane fighting my girlfriend's dad, like something like that. Um, the propeller was stuff that they do and the vulture is very threatening and I, I just like it a lot. The plane crashes. Uh, we see a little bit of Avengers Tower. So what do you guys think? Like, is that going to be the Baxter building? Roxxon? I, I don't know. Oscorp? Fisk Tower? I don't well, think it'll become anything. It yet. has to be something. Okay, maybe, but like, I still have no idea. Like, they're not, I don't know what it could be because they haven't set anything. I have no clue. Yeah. Well, if you look at it from a licensing perspective, considering Spider-Man's on a deal with them, with Sony, so if they wanted to do the easy thing, they own the rights to Fantastic Four, just it make it the Baxter, the Baxter building. building yeah. It should be I the think. Baxter building. Because Oscorp is like, you have to kind of act like Oscorp was always there, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, it, I, you were right, Ev. It, it needs to be Harry in this film. Yeah, I would have preferred it that way. And he could have been, remember, think about it, he could have had two movies, and he already knows who, who Spider-Man is. Mm-hmm. So as soon as like something goes so the down, slow descent. Yeah. yeah, he knows right away, and that could be the Sinister Six. Um, anyway, so I was also thinking with all the tech that they were gonna take from the plane, could we have had an Iron Vulture? Ooh, hmm. yeah. yeah. He doesn't really need the wings, does he? 
if no. you Iron Man. Yeah, he could just fly. <laughs> you know, what I mean, cool? I guess you could you could argue like he doesn't fully understand the technology, so he builds the suit, but it, it's not like that good. So he still needs the wings. Can you imagine like a what yeah. if scenario? Like take Tony Stark's bleeding edge Stark armor and mix it with the Vulture mech suit. Can you imagine the Vulture like materializing wings out of nothing? That'd be cool. It would be, yeah. Um, so this is the part where he goes, "I'm not gonna go home empty-handed." It's like, but you you did that before, like you know you know the drill. Like Spider-Man is here; they know what's happening. He's gonna if you don't kill Spider-Man, which you promised to do, he's gonna tell everyone it was you. Like you're not you're not getting anything out of this. This is over. Hey, remind me, is is Bug that out. line? Are they in the air still, or have they landed on the beach yet? They haven't landed yet. Yeah, They're, it's crashing. And they're like, get out of there. And he's like, no. And it's like, that's really out of character for you. Someone who is so practical about it, like safety and security. And you, uh, yeah, you just stay in. Okay. And yeah, so like this explosion, for some reason, like will destroy the wings, but not destroy him. Right? I mean, what is, I, it makes yeah, no sense. Yeah, it's, it's so weird, and then and, and this calls back to a couple of the things the things you were saying earlier, Kayla. Where it's like he doesn't he understands the technology, he knows how it works, but he doesn't seem to believe Peter's right. Yeah, and also like then you got Peter trying to save him, and, and so Vulture essentially defeats himself because Vulture beat Spider Man in this one. So he he essentially, I don't know, he's just like, eh, no, I'm I'm gonna win. Like, dude, everything, the plane crashed. It's yeah. over. Yeah, and, like, somebody's going to be coming. Yeah. On a, on a side note, have you guys noticed, like, how... I, I want to use the word crude, but I don't think that describes the suit very well. His, like, his wingsuit is, like, dangerously violent. Like, when he picks Peter up and it, like, yeah, grips like him, it. it, like, stabs him. That's yeah. nasty. Yeah, I like it a lot. I, he should have been trying to kill Peter because that's what he said he would do. He's like, all right, this well, is I mean, this heist is no been longer. That hard. He could have just stabbed him with his wings. Oh, I'm saying like this yeah, heist. Yeah, he, he the heist. He, Go ahead. He, he he just what he is trying to say, I think, is that like everything he's doing here is like against everything his character has been built as. He knows when not to do the heists. He knows that how the technology works. He's gonna kill Peter if he gets in the way of the family. But then yeah. all that just kind of goes away. And not only that, the heist is over, essentially. And he understands that Peter is not going to go away. Either he kills him or there's never going to be another heist. This is like the third one that he's foiled. So he needs to kill Peter. And Peter needs to beat him. Um, but he doesn't. That's not what happens. Anyway, so it's he like... He saves him, he gives up, he defends his yeah. personality. Because even now, it's like, okay, they're, they're saving him for a potential Sinister Six thing or whatever. But it's like... I don't see... I don't even see Michael Keaton at this point coming back after he's been caught, you know? Like, after the fallout mm-hmm. happened with his family to be like, I gotta kill Peter Parker. He was way more practical. He's a family man. You know what would be interesting... So, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna use the PS4 game as an example. So you know how in the PS4 game, the um the reason why he joins the Sinister Six is because, and spoilers for anyone who hasn't played the game, um, Doctor Octopus offers him like a cure for his bone cancer, right? That's in his spine from using the suit. Okay. Can you imagine if, like, let's say a couple years down the line, the exposure not only to using experimental Chitari like radioactive weaponry. But wearing that wingsuit like gave him like an ailment of some sort, and that's what forced him into working with the Sinister Six. Like the desperation. I mean, I like the idea that he like knew he was dying and needed to make as much money as possible. That'd be that'd be it's an interesting yeah. concept. I wouldn't mind seeing. I that. just you know because we can talk about it now. I guess he he's in the trailer for Morbius, out of prison. <laughs> yes, he is. And he's so like, what, "What's up, Doc? What is that? Like who?" Is this supposed I, to be set I, like I, way in advance or something? I think I it's him. I'd love it to be him. That'd be so no, funny. No, it's him. It's him for sure. Like they wouldn't have put that in the trailer if they didn't. They're using the vulture, and Michael Keaton doesn't give a fuck. He's like, yeah, I'll do whatever movie. I don't care. <laughs> he doesn't even know what movie it is. Probably he's just like, yeah, yeah I'll do the lines. 
Yeah, 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 yeah I mean, he was in right Dumbo, bro. Like, yeah. Oh my God, he was. I completely forgot about that movie. Um, so then we switch to this thing where they reveal MJ's name. And she goes, she goes, my friends call me MJ. And Ned goes, I thought you said you didn't have friends. And she goes, what did she say? Like, uh, I didn't. I didn't. It's like, okay, hold on. <laughs> Fuck this. <laughs> what? So this whole movie has been about her and like her like heartwarming adventure to like gaining the best friends the best like crewmates she could find in this journey called life. Like what is going on here? <laughs> she didn't do anything. She, she sat there the whole time. She made snarky comments to Peter. She didn't go in the Washington monument with the rest of them. Like they all are like bonded for life now with this <laughs> near death experience. She wasn't a part of that. Like, come on, don't, don't start this bullshit. They're not her friend. Like, I mean, they could be nice. She could be like, yeah, I'm starting, you know, I'm starting to open up with these people, but no, don't don't do this stupid thing right at the end of the movie. That's you know, fucking you, bullshit. You mentioned like her staying outside the the memorial. That kind of reminded me. <laughs> this movie has a lot of like funny little moments like that, like where she's like, "I don't want to go somewhere built by slaves," and the teacher's like, "No, nah, I don't think so." And then the security guard kind of gives him the hand wave. Oh yeah, we didn't talk about Martin Starr. He's he's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, especially he's when he, so funny. When it's like, uh, "I didn't want to lose another child on a trip." <laughs> yeah, and it's like you I, did though. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh god he's so but it, it sucks because they kind of overdo it in the next movie I think they gave him more yeah and they also kind of underused uh, the other guy yeah, the name. other guy was really funny yeah. for whatever DJ Smooth or, no, not DJ it's something J Smooth <laughs> I don't know what it is <laughs> <laughs> DJ Smooth <laughs> what is it what is his name I don't know look Let's it up look it up if he's right if his name is like John Peterson I'm so racist <laughs> Okay, far from home. Uh, IMDb. Come on, what do you uh, got? What do you got? Racist or not racist? Um, is it? Yeah, JB Smooth. JB. Okay, all right. I got the J and I got the Smooth. Not racist. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right, let's move uh. on. So then we get to the press conference. Yeah. And I mean, I like this. I I don't really know. Okay, so is Tony like proud of him now that he's like, okay, you you still did it on your own. That means you're good enough again? And yeah. Just to they, clarify, they kind that of is just... the Civil War conference, right? That That's supposed to be? The Civil War conference? Remember in Civil War, Peter Parker reveals his identity in front of a bunch of reporters? That's what that is supposed oh, to be, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. In the comic. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so I I, I, also, I could understand if, if Tony's like, all right, obviously this kid, like, he has a lot of power. He's not going to stop. He's going to do the hero thing. I might as well embrace it now instead of trying to hold him back. Like, maybe I was wrong. The movie never says that. I assume that's what the logic is. Um, you know, it's like teach kids yeah, safe sex then, instead of know, telling them abstinence. <laughs> yeah, but, mm. like, you know, it, it's a good scene, like you were saying, Kia, but I also think that... Um, I don't know. Once again, it's not really about Peter. Right. Um, I like that line where Tony Stark is like, yeah, you'll, you'll meet Vision. He, you know, he's not really good with doors. Like, you'll yeah. see him. Like, he says something funny about it. Yeah. So are we, are we assuming that Peter doesn't take it because he now feels like he's not ready and wants to stay? Wants I to assumed wait. he felt like he wanted to have, like, his high school experience. Not like, cause he he seems to get unhappy when it's like you're moving here. Like he likes being an Avenger, but he doesn't want to live there. Well, change his life. Well, but the arc is that he thinks he's ready the whole movie until he learns that he's not. And so I think that the point of the final scene is he realizes I'm not ready for this yet. I should yeah keep my head low and keep working as what I've been doing. Um, all right, so then Tony and Pepper get married anyway. We see the Iron Spider suit, which I thought was pretty nice. Like, and I bought the figure. Um, yeah, and it pays off, obviously. I like that suit. Um, mm. And then, so then we see the post credit sequence with Scorpion and uh, Vulture. Vulture doesn't give him up. Vulture, Vulture respects Peter, which is, again, like, it doesn't really feed into why... His character, but... Yeah, he. I mean, he seems like he would be friends with Peter at this point. 
Although I don't know what he does when he gets out of jail. Like you can't make money. You're gonna He's have to like, go back to what you were. Good old Spider Man goes and steals <laughs> yeah. Falcon's wingsuit and goes back to the life of crime. Well, maybe he, um, he, he maybe he Falcon. gets broken out of prison by someone bigger to steal something. Or maybe Morbius escapes and he escapes with him. That too. Um, yeah. Yeah, I wonder if I, that feels like to me that feels like it's at the end of Morbius, whatever that scene was. Um, Venom breaks them out and says, "I need your help with Cletus Cassidy." <laughs> Venom. Uh, all right, yeah, so that, it's gonna be strange. I'm like thinking about that too. And then I think the the end credits with Captain America saying like, "You waited so long for something so insignificant." I think that's really funny too. Um. And that's the movie. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. you know, it's interesting. Like, we all seem to like aspects of it a lot, but we also all agree that there's this thing that's holding it back. Well, it's okay, not so, perfect. So let's rank it. Is it the best Spider-Man movie? No. no. Is he the best Spider-Man? No. Is he the best Peter Parker? No. He's 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 no. the one that fits the best in this universe. Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield, I don't think I could see... They couldn't fit with this universe. He works great in the universe with all the other characters, but that's the problem. He's not his own person. I think I like Tom Holland more than Spider-Man and Peter Parker. And I think that's kind of what keeps me on. And I still maintain that his bit in Civil War is better than this entire movie. Yeah. Like in terms of like Spider Man, Spider Man is in yes, the movie on yes. screen. Peter Parker, Spider Man, like Civil War nails it in the short time that it has, and this movie like I don't know stretches it. Um. So ultimately, like I I think for single single story like single character driven stories, the Tobey Maguire ones are still king, but this 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 one's acceptable. This one's good. We know the next movie is a, is a lot of fun. And who knows what they'll do? You know, he's got a lot of screen time. I'm, I've been watching Infinity War. Like, he's good in that. Um, I think the writers are better. The the guys who work with the Russo brothers, McFeely and something, mm-hmm. uh, Marcus and McFeely, they probably write Spider Man better than John Watts does. John Watts does the high school stuff better. Okay. I'm also ready for them to get out of high school. Yeah, for real. So here's my last question to you, I guess. Do we really need to see the scene where they have like that graduation? No. It yeah. should just be like we should see the tail end where like he just gets home. He's got like his like graduation shit on and he like talks to Aunt May and that's it. But can they even do that now that everyone knows he's Spider-Man? Well, well I'm assuming there's going to be gonna a be way to resolve that... somehow. Yeah. yeah. Either it's they they don't think he is anymore or I mean, Iron Man was Iron Man. So here's what I like. Um, I like this idea of he's now out of high school, like after Far From Home. I mean, whatever, after Spider-Man 3. They I'll should right do like one sec. They should do like a small time jump. He's now out of high school. And then just retain like some of the, the core supporting cast that you like. Like the Betty Brant character has been in it. Ned is in it. Um, Flash Thompson can be in it. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, they like keep in touch. They see each other. Like that's his friend group from high school. You could also, um, add new people from college who knows who like Harry Osborne, I guess, I suppose. I mean, I'd say Kurt Connor is, but that's, uh, I don't really want to see the lizard again. I wonder if they would blend Kurt Connors with, uh, um, the goblin. Because they're Maybe. kind of the same, right? It's just, it's just that one becomes a lizard, one becomes a goblin, and uses a yeah. glider. But ultimately, they kind of have the same problem, right? Like, we're going to turn into something if we don't do the thing, whatever. Uh-huh. Um, okay, so Emerson's not here, so I'm assuming that means there's no fight of the week. Or I guess we can go back to it. So let's talk about the roundup. So you like Sorry this? About that. Oh, um, do you have a fight of the week, Emerson? Had someone at the door. Yes, I do. Um, okay. So um, what I was going to say was, Kia, if you were in Michael Keaton's position, you're the vulture. You've just discovered, based off your daughter, that Spider-Man is Peter Parker. How would you go? What, what would you do? Because we all kind of agree that that third act 
he makes strange choices in like every single regard. So what would you do in order to like, how would you cope with that information? Would you give up? Would you try the heist anyway? Okay, would you so kill you're saying him? I'm an evil person, right? Yes. So I, I would definitely give him the chance because I don't want to kill a kid. And he did save my daughter. Like I would give him the chance. Like exactly what Vulture does in the film. Don't ever do it again. But when I see him on that plane, he has to die. Okay. He has to die on that plane. So I think, you know, he, he Spider-Man kind of holds his own against them. He's not, I don't know if he's trying to kill him, but they are like in danger. Um, so if I, assuming I would land and then not be an idiot and like be around the explosives, I would, <laughs> I would escape, right? Right. Peter Parker's still there. He's probably outed. Maybe, maybe not. Like if he can escape before the crowd comes. Um, but after that, I think I go, I think I go straight to his house. Oh, God. I think that's what you do. That's the play. This isn't going to stop. You go straight to his house. You kidnap Aunt May. And you wait to see if Peter returns. And when he does, like, because, you know, if he is outed, then the cops will come. So you don't want to be there for that. So you just wait far, a little far away with Aunt May. And when he comes, I think you got to kill them both. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I mean, I, I don't see a scenario That's... where I'm like, I'll kill your aunt if you don't stop. He's not going to stop. He's going to come again. We, I already gave him that option, didn't I? Yeah, you're right. So you got to kill them both. He's got to go. Okay, but then Iron Man comes for you. Iron Man comes kill for Iron me. Kill Iron Man too. <laughs> he comes for me. Well, I think I have to just run away. I don't think he would. Well, I'm just saying, he like, might. I don't mean he comes for you right there, but, like, y- I yeah, believe no. that if, if Tom Holland, if Peter Parker and his aunt are murdered, you're telling me Tony Stark isn't going to be like, okay, that's it. But here's the thing. When Tony takes the suit from him, doesn't he essentially like relinquish all the tracking? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He won't know exactly what happened, but he'll try to find a way. Would he even know that if Peter Parker like didn't talk to him for a while? I mean, I'd assume he'd see the news when they're like, we found these two fucking dead people. Well, I would assume that um, the vulture, well, I would use that weapon that he used on the shocker. Oh, to disintegrate him? (laughs) Yeah. Oh, God. Damn, yeah, because then it might just be like, well, Peter disappeared. Like, nobody knows. And eventually Iron Man will come for me, but I'll be living in, like, the Bahamas or something. (laughs) You'll be like, kill me, I don't care. I'll be gone. I I will ghost, like, there's no way. You have to lie low for like 10 years at least. See see what Tony Stark does. If He doesn't even notice the kid is gone. All right, then. <laughs> Problem okay. solved. Back to just scavenging. He didn't, he obviously, he didn't care about that. Um, all right. So moving on to the roundup. Uh, did Emerson, did you watch Mandalorian? No. So Everett, you watched it, right? Ever I did watch it, yes. Okay. <laughs> All right, so rate it. There's a yes, yes, yes. 300 MS delay right now. Oh, weird. Can you hear me? Yeah. All right, if I have to rate it on our rating scale, um, I'd give it a draw. There are a lot of things I'd like, like I really do like, but it does still suffer from the same normal BS the Mandalorian always suffers from. Like, It's not a lot to do. It's, like, He's not that interesting. The the one the thing I liked about the episode was the plot, like the people in it. The, they do you guys care about spoilers? I watched it. I don't. Okay, well you watched it. Emerson doesn't care. So Emerson, you watched the Clone Wars, right? Of course you did. Yeah. They brought in for this episode. They brought in Bo Katan and her like little band of Mandalorians. I hate them. I I liked it <laughs> because they basically she, all like, she does and, is like we're gonna get what's ours. Like that's all it is. You, while you're right, I definitely liked it a little bit. <laughs> I liked it because I'm like a big fan of the Star Wars lore and mythos, as with a lot of stuff. And while The Mandalorian's a kind of a shitty series, they, they set up some interesting plot points in this. Not only are they alluding to the one episode that Ahsoka's going to be in next episode, um, they talk about... Is it about, only going to be one episode? I'm, you know what? I'll bet money it's only one episode. 
because that's just what they do. I don't think it's going to be that much. Or if it's more than one, I don't think she's going to be in it for very much. One episode, but, huh? Anyone want to take that bet? I have no idea what the fuck they're going to do, so I'm I'm staying out of this. What YouTube would you bet? Thing. What would you bet, Ev? That she's I'm only not, gonna I'm not, one. The last time I made a bet with you, I lost hardcore. You so just I'm said not, you not, just said you no. Ever you gotta stay in this, bro. I you could gotta lose, stay. I could lose. You might be right. Twenty bucks. I'll bet twenty bucks that she's in one episode. And only one episode. It it okay. Yeah, I know Kia for a fact for sake, Kia knows something. That I'm, I'm basically going to lose 20 bucks because I know for a fact she's not going to be in – she's going to be in said, more than one episode. Okay. You just said she's she's in only the, the next episode. I know she's going to be in more than one episode. I know that. You just what? said what the I'm, opposite. No. What, I, what no. I'm saying is she's not going to be properly utilized. They no, are that's going not what you limit. said. <laughs> that's what I was trying to say. That's not what you said. You consider the bet and then you're like, no, I'm going to lose. Yeah, you 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 That's backed why out. I know I'm gonna lose because if I take that bet, I'm gonna lose. Yeah, but until Kia said something, you thought you were right. They're not gonna utilize her properly, is what I'm trying yeah, to say. Yeah, but this show's not... garbo. Okay, Everett, I'll bet you sixty dollars. No, hell no, I will lose that immediately, and that's way too much. I lost fifty dollars on the stupid Joker bet. I'm not going down that road again. I just wanna get Assassin's what was the Creed Joker Valhalla. bet again? Um, I bet that they that she would kill Jared Leto's Joker on screen, and I lost. I don't even remember that. What was? <laughs> oh, what I did do you remember lose? that. I, I bet Emerson sixty dollars. No, it was fifty dollars. Fifty dollars oh. that in Birds of Prey she would kill Jared Leto's Joker on screen in that oh. Ace Chemicals explosion, and I lost. Yikes! Yeah, that was. You have a much better <laughs> chance on this bet. And I'm not taking it. I don't care. <laughs> But, right. as I, but as I was saying, like I like the fact that they're setting up the difference between Bo-Katan's Mandalorian clan and Death Watch. Because Emerson, you didn't watch it. They revealed officially that the Mandalorian was raised by Death Watch. And that he's like, what, what he's following is like a fanatical version of the Mandalorian code. Yeah, and they did the, the they like actually, you know how they say uh, show, not tell? Uh-huh. Yeah, so they did the thing where she just says that. And yeah, so that's how we know. Um, what she there's no likes, subtlety at all. She just says, "Yeah, it. I, I'm gonna be honest. Like that doesn't. I didn't like the Mandalorians that much in Clone Wars because it just becomes preachy and like I. And part of the problem too, and I know this isn't necessarily fair, is that I associate Mandalorians with these fucking like nerds who are like the Mandalorians are so cool. Mandalorian warriors could like outfight the Jedi, the Mandalorian, and it just like. <laughs> it just uh, it disgusts me <laughs> just so you know like in terms of like practicality they're indistinguishable in the show other than like for the things that they say like every action well, they take it's all so they're the same essentially ever give it a draw what do you give it i give it a loss there were a couple bah, 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 bah. there were a couple parts like people are saying this is the best episode that's ever come out of star or the best thing of star wars since in decades or whatever oh, i wouldn't go that far it's like first of all rogue one is better and second of all this episode it does have a couple interesting points like the mon calamari try to catch capture him right and then uh -huh. there is a fight uh, it's in the middle of the episode it's a, by the way i fell asleep i should tell you i had to watch the second <laughs> half of it later um because it actually in between the fights it's not only is it like not good it's genuinely boring and i'm not saying that like i don't care about what's going on in the plot there is no plot it's like them to like walking slowly or taking their like it's all filler it's so much filler they don't have it no, they just don't have right. the plot um okay here's the plot of the story he gets captured by mon calamari and then gets rescued by the mandalorian people so it's like okay that's good then i don't know they like kind of puppies can you stop <laughs> they're like fighting each other um, yeah we can hear so so then they so they get into an argument or sorry they they rescue them then they like walk around they sort of like have their philosophical differences but nothing's actually happening um they want help getting a ship and then they'll tell mando where the jedi are if they if he helps them get the freighter because they want like the weapons by the way, I had to like kind of look up the plot, and I realized it was a lot more layered than I would than what I thought. 
the show just does a terrible job. Like every single thing they say is just exposition. I didn't even realize that what's her name had tried to double cross him because the show doesn't really play it like that. It's more like help us. Oh, the stakes just got a little higher. And now that you've helped us, here's what we offered you. And so I think they know that people are just going to eat Star Wars up regardless of what it is. So I don't. So think this just sounds hard. like Garbo. So they have. I mean, it ha- it has high production quality. It looks good. Um, but so they they get the ship. It has that guy that played Titus, and he was in some other stuff. I don't know. He's like one of the commander, and he says she's looking for the dark saber, right? Mm-hmm. And he won't give it to her. He like eats a capsule like a Nazi and dies. <laughs> <laughs> and and then Moff Gideon basically says in the in the voice chat or something like I have it <laughs> in the voice chat there was like some communications thing right yeah it was that she she before she explains what she wants with the dark saber Moff Gideon is on like the hollow communicator and basically tells them like go down with the ship they're not getting the weapons and then she comes and interrogates him it's like I need something with me in order to rule Mandalore, something that was stolen from me. Where is it? And that's basically it. And, and you already just, know what's just so you know, like everything I'm recapping right now is what I remember from what I read, because in the show it's so boring and drawn out that I like I'm like my head is spinning. Like I don't even know what I don't care what's happening anymore. Um, so she gives him uh, the location of uh, Sokotano, and the child was with. The frog people from the last episode, they watched him. So he grabs the child, and then he's on his way. Yep. So, so yeah. since Everett refused to take that bet, Kia, did we get to know why you wanted to make the bet? I just think you're going to bring Ahsoka Tanner. You're going to cast a somewhat famous person. Oh, so you don't have any news or something no, that I don't. says... No, I don't. Oh, Everett, you should take the bet. Everett chickened out. Yeah, you're right. I'm checking it out. Okay, I don't know how many episodes are left. What? <laughs> Isn't there five? But I, I assume there are five episodes left. Okay, I assume <laughs> that she needs an introduction episode if they do it right. And then you're going to have well, another You didn't assume where... this before. Ah, oh, you should have taken the bet over. This yeah, would have been so funny. No, okay. I, you just said it's so I good poorly to be one communicated episode. what I was trying to say. What I was trying to say was that I think she is going to be underutilized. You're going to bring in a character as big as Ahsoka Tano. It's, and they did it with Boba Fett. They alluded to the fact that um, whatever, what's his name? But he was Tam only Morrison. in one episode. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is people were like, "Oh, Boba Fett's going to be like the main He's villain of the series." Back. Yeah, but he was like a, a cameo at this point. We're like five episodes. Yeah, in. you, 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 you had too much of that like knowing tone in your voice. You should have, <laughs> you should have like zoned, don't uh, toned it down and been like, "Okay, well, all right, let's make a bet and like see what happens." But instead, you had that. Oh, okay, let's make a bet. Let's make a bet. You were too eager. Well, I mean, it's a, it's a pretty like hard line to draw in the sand. They're only going to have her in one episode. Um, but yeah, this is this show sucks. Um. And, and yes, ever you're right, they're going to underutilize her, but it's not because that's their plan. It's because they literally don't know how to utilize anything. Yeah. Um, oh, and on a side note, Emerson, from the trailer, remember that hooded girl on the on the water planet? Is that Bo-Katan? Yeah, it turns out we were both wrong. It was, yeah, it was Bo-Katan. Wait, who did you think it was? I thought it was Sabine Wren, and you thought it was Ahsoka. Oh. Whatever. Who the fuck is Sabine Wren? Oh, oh, Sabine. Okay. I mean, sorry. I cannot, I cannot say enough how much the Mandalorian people were just exposition machines. Like no character, nothing. And well, and what, I what, bet uh, you. What are the I gods of Instagram the Reddit page for this? this? I should pull. I'll pull up the Reddit page for it, and I'll I'll see. What I know. I I was reading one of the today. The guy was like, "It's not really that good. It has a lot of problems with the pacing and this and that." And he was downvoted like severely already. It, it honestly astounds me the lengths people will go to to defend garbage. Like, like I'll, I'll, I'll be that. honest. Like, Emerson, you're describing, like, the Mandalorian nerds that are like, ooh, Mandalorian. Like, that's me, pretty much. Like, I obsess over the lore and stuff like that, and I love stuff like that. But even I can recognize this shit is, like, unacceptable. Why do other people not see it? And I think a lot of people are beginning are they just, to like, see trying it. To- but then they, they throw well, okay, a little so fan just, service thing out, and it's like you get you get really hammered if you say anything against that. I went on I went on the Star Wars subreddit. They have a discussion thread for it. The top comment 
every Mandalorian plot episode plot ever will advance your story if you do us this one favor. Yeah. But then the comment right beneath us is, it's like an RPG. I don't mind it, though. They're like, they're like, oh, it's fine. Then there's, like, some fan theory stuff. So, I mean, they're kind of figuring out, but they're also, like... But you have to understand, in this in this episode, he essentially... Okay, he gets the child. You need that episode. Then you need the episode where you... I guess you don't need it, but they have it set up this way, where he, he transports the frog people, and they tell him where the Mandalorians are. Then the Mandalorians tell him where the Jedi are. So you're talking, like... 60 minutes of screen time at most to to get to where we are in the story. Yeah, right but now. here we go. People talking about how amazing it is. Have I mentioned um, the like the fact that they reuse plots in this show a lot? They only have one plot. He goes no, somewhere. Know, but, um... He gets into a fight. They say, "Okay, here's the one piece of vague information that you need to continue on your journey in this vague direction." And then he does. Okay. I remember, like, I, I was like reading a post. Someone was comparing like season one and season two. Like, can you imagine, like, like Mando goes to a random planet with the child, finds like some backwater village. Backwater village has a threat that needs to be taken care of. So he attempts to was... do it, and it's too big. He, then he trains the people to fight back, and then he leaves. This that episode like felt times. really rewarding as a Clone Wars slash Rebels viewer. It's only going to intensify. This show is clearly a live action sequel to the cartoon. So amazing. And I'm gonna be honest with you, like the Clone Wars sucks too. You guys, I know you guys like it, but it's not good. It's bad writing. It's boring. Yeah, well, I give it a pass because it's an animated 22 minute TV show. I'm like, eh. It was free also, like, too. But even when I was a and kid, you can skip around and pick the good arcs. Like, there's a lot of like gray area. No, you guys told me the good arcs. No, you didn't watch the arcs. I told you. I I watched enough. Did you watch Umbra? I watched a lot. I don't know. I watched. I don't a think lot you it. watched Umbra because we didn't discuss it. That's I, that's like I, I'm the gonna, good. I'm arc. gonna take a shot in the dark and say it's not worth watching. I think that's like the best arc of the whole series. Uh, who's take the main, Who's the will. main character? Uh, Rex. Well, technically, okay, Kroll. I'm out. I'm out. I don't want any of those stupid clones. I don't care. No, well, that's why gonna, it's the best season. The none next of the, there's only of the one Jedi. There's no, there's no uh, the Jedi. That's why it's the best arc. Yeah. I hate the Jedi. I don't like any of the Jedi stuff. I don't like Ahsoka. I don't like watching them like do stuff. I'm more interested in the war part. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Whatever. The show sucks, and we already knew that. Best episode by far, Bo-Katan, Gideon's Return. They're Ahsoka not wrong. It was the best episode by far. But They're you gave wrong. the first episode a draw, and you give this one a loss. The draw is that. That's because, and I said in the review, on the episode, it's because you haven't seen the Mandalorian in a while, so like that repetitive stru- plot structure hasn't worn you down yet. It's refreshing. It's a little new, and you're like, all right, I could watch more of this, assuming it's going somewhere, even though I knew it wasn't. And then you get to episode two, and it's like the same thing again. And you're like, okay, now I see. Now I see. And then this is the best one of all of them. But it's like, you're still just, it's still just paper thin characters. Just absolutely paper thin. The plot is so paper thin. The dark saber is like the biggest deal of it all. And it's like, what do I care about a stupid saber? That was never mentioned in any of the movies. But it was mentioned in the Clone Wars. (laughs) Shut the fuck up. Ahsoka never existed. It didn't happen. You understand? He did not have an apprentice that he never acknowledged ever. Give me a fucking break. Just here's here's a good comment for you. This is in the the mega thread for the episode. Anyone else in a really good mood right now and just scrolling through this thread upvoting posts along the way? Yep, I'm also commenting as much as possible. This is the way. This is the way. Yeah, I watched the episode at 1 a.m. It is now 4 a.m. And all I've been doing is scrolling through Reddit with this warm, fuzzy feeling. Wow. Nothing happened in the episode. (laughs) No, 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 Kia. They have their warm, fuzzy feeling. They're just like, wow, they put the character from the TV show. It has the same name, not the same face, but, you know, same general appearance. My dreams have come true. I had to warn my family today that if Ahsoka shows up in the show next week, I'll probably get emotional. I'm a big <laughs> enough man to admit that I cried when she is revealed as Fulcrum. I cried when she faced Vader in the Sith Temple. I cried when she met with Anakin again. I cried when the 501st painted their helmets. This guy probably cries when he gets a parking ticket. 
<laughs> you won't be alone, says another guy. <laughs> Whatever. I mean, people can like what they want, but don't try to tell me that. Like, you can enjoy it, but don't try to tell me it's good writing or a good show. Like, no, it's a fan service show, and that's it. And that's a <laughs> very different thing. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. All right, so Emerson, you watched The Crown? Yeah, I just finished season two. I'm really loving it. I really enjoyed season two. I liked. Um, How about the, the scene stuff. where they where Tommy Lassels reveals? Uh, Dude, that King was Edward. what I was gonna talk about. That was so good because so I knew yeah. a little bit about it, like I like background information, but I had no idea like the extent. And when he's like revealing it, and it's panning to Elizabeth's face, and it just gets worse and worse, and it's yeah. intercut with showing. Yeah him like doing the things and then the end of the episode with the actual pictures yeah well, like, i was like that actor Tom, that plays shit. tommy lassels i love that guy in the show he's my favorite in the show yeah it's a shame he's, he's really good. retired um like in the story he's he's like retired. yeah he's so good um but dude that and like the kennedy stuff and like the kennedy stuff yeah that was a big deal when that came out uh yeah and, Hall and plays jfk yeah and um there's plenty more of uh, that just, type of casting coming too. Where, yeah, where do you I watch just, The I, Crown? Is there a streaming service Netflix. that shows it off? Netflix. It's a Netflix okay. original. It's the most expensive show. It's so good, but no, I really, really, I, I just, I enjoyed it so much, and I'm looking forward to start. I'm a little sad that all the all the actors are going to change no, now. It hurts. I definitely had a crush on Claire Foy, like not even like a romantic thing, but I was like, I missed her a lot in the next one. And also remember, this is rough, but. Um, they tried to age them up at the end of this. You have to remember, and then in season three, it only takes place a year after, but they are a lot older, and so they start to settle in as as they get towards the end of season three, they start to look the age properly. So there is it is a rough transition. Also, they changed um, the guy who did the soundtrack. They changed that person. Not that it's worse. It's just different. And I'm not sure that was the right move because I think the music could have created a cohesiveness. Um, but you'll have to let me know. I haven't started season four yet because, unfortunately, when you get into relationships, your wife wants to watch it with you. And she is, like, not into shows as much. So she basically just, like, doesn't feel like watching it and then gets mad at me if I watch it. So, like, yeah, right so now, I would. She's I holding mean, you hostage. I would get off of this and watch it right now, but I can't. <laughs> so, yeah, but it, it's a bummer. But um, highly recommend. It's it's really good. And just uh, season two, I liked it more than season one. Just everything. Oh, that season two is better. better. Yeah, season two is better. Yeah. Um, like, how about uh, on the flip side of that Tommy Lasso's conversation, the one where he has about uh, Tony and his like many, you know, the oh that Margaret yes, wants when it's marry. him, it's him and the current <laughs> advisor. What's his name? Martin I forget Chotris. him. Chotris. Yeah, Chatris. And they're like sitting there and they're like, and those are only the natural relationships, ma'am. And like Elizabeth's face is slowly like, uh, as yeah, it so, gets worse. So Everett, Princess Margaret, um, she was going to marry this guy, Peter Townsend, who was like working for her father. But mm -hmm. he was older and divorced and like that's not allowed in the church. And the queen is the head of the church. So they wouldn't let her do that. They sent him away. And then um, – so then she finds this other guy who's like kind of exciting. He's like offbeat and, you know, weird guy kind of guy. And He's a photographer. <laughs> yeah. And so he she like wants to marry him and Elizabeth starts to doesn't think it's such a good idea, but she can't say no to her again, right? And Margaret like absolutely plays that card. So the the secretaries do some like research on the guy and he's like bisexual. And so he's having like three different affairs with three different women. And then, oh. and then so Elizabeth hears and she's sitting there like, what the, what am I going to do? And then the <laughs> Tommy Lassos is like, and those are only the natural ones. <laughs> and, then, and she's oh. like, what? And they're like, yeah. He's, he's also like sleeping a... with his, like a married couple. Like he's sleeping yeah. with both of them. And the woman's pregnant. And like. What, what time period does this take place in? Like uh, the, it was the, the 60s. 50s? That was the 60s. It starts in like 1950 and has flashbacks to World War II, pre World War II, maybe. Wow. Um, yeah, Edward. <laughs> Edward. You know, they say. I believe they say in the show, either in this episode or later. I don't remember when. They tell you that his plan, even when he abdicated, his plan was to be reinstated by Hitler. 
Yes, yes. It was. It's in the same episode with. Um, it's in the the past episode where it's like all revolving around him. Yeah. But, like, I just love the beats as Tommy Lasso delivers. Like, first of all, he's like, he was going to betray and dethrone your father. And you're like, what the fuck? He visited the concentration camps. He visited all these things. And then to end with, like, he encouraged the Blitz. Yeah. And, like, her face is just like, what the yeah. fuck? He's like, to encourage the, uh, I forgot what the word Well, he, he said used. the British people, to encourage the British people to the surrender slaughter. the bombings the, should be considered. The yeah. slaughter of his people, yeah yeah um and former subjects and he's it's just like holy shit and like he's such oh god and the actor that plays him is so good i love the scene earlier in season one maybe where it's the um who's the who's the head of the church what's his name the bishop the bishop yeah and uh edward is like if i was as weak as my brother and tommy lass was like nothing weak about the late king and then and then Edward turns on the bishop and he like says that rhyme. Yeah, the dirty rhyme oh, about the bishop. Such a so good. And then the way they show his marriage with um with Simpson. With Simpson, Simpson right? Margie yeah. or something, and like how they kind of hate each other. <laughs> yeah. And they wear well, like the, the costumes and all that yeah. shit. Well, and then like and then in earlier in that episode when it's like he was passing on the documents to uh his wife was taking the documents and sleeping with. Um, oh yeah, she Ruben was giving. Yeah. She was giving the uh, intel to the not to the German officer. She was cheating on him with. Like, what a fucking idiot! Um, I'm trying to think some or, of the or other. How yeah. about? How about when? Uh, when he's like, when the German invasion plans were found in Belgium, Edward told the Germans, giving them time to change their plans, yeah. and then he's like, and Paris was captured a month later, yeah. which like basically lays the blame for everything firmly at yeah. Edward's feet. Yeah. Um, other other scenes I really liked. Uh, I liked the whole thing with Nasser and Eden. Yeah. Uh, like the a casting lot. is so perfect in this show. Like he was ungodly. just getting everything Eden did, which just made it worse. No matter how he tried, like it was yeah. always an, like, yeah. offending him. And then um, uh-huh. who's the guy? Uh, who's who is his successor? Uh, uh, I can't remember. I don't know. McMillan. He's like kind of McMillan. A, yeah, McMillan. And so like the way he betrays him and then the when he – like the whole thing when he gets embarrassed by his wife publicly yeah. and he's humiliated and um, – And when and he, he quits. When he quits, the dressing down she gives him. Yes. I love that scene. I know. Well, OK. One of the other scenes I thought was She's really so good. fucking good is when – Remember she was when, the first man. When Jackie Kennedy is returning to England after finding out that – um elizabeth like overheard what she had said and elizabeth changes their meeting before the lunch to the castle and there's like all the british guards marching around and it's like the power play i really like yeah, that but see that see that's one of the things where claire foy was too young for that episode because she doesn't look very matronly next to jackie kennedy she they tried to make her look older but she's too young it's true but what i like about that scene so much is like when Jackie Kennedy's watching up and like the Queen's guard are all over and there's this difference where yeah. she had just been at the White House dinner where they were like, all right, goodbye. Yeah. And now it's like, no, the Queen has power here. Um, and, and then, you know, Olivia Coleman is a fantastic actress. I don't think she gets a lot to do in, in season three. So I'm, I'm wondering what it's like in season four. In season three, I really like the guy that plays Philip. No, Charles. Sorry, Prince Charles. I really like him. And he's, he gets some really good episodes. I think he's the best part of the show, him and Anne. Um, I really liked um, Philip and Charles at the end of season two with, like, going to the school in Scotland. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, this is what I meant to bring up. That scene with his sister's funeral. Yeah. Doesn't that remind you of a Trump rally? It does, yeah. All the Nazi salutes. Yep. Remember, that was pre-World War II. So we didn't, like, yep. that was a different type of Nazi than what we think of now. If you call someone a Nazi now, you think that they're going to, like, kill a bunch of Jews and they're genocidal maniacs. But those, like, f- fanatical no, those just idiots. Yeah. yeah, that just become, like, I'm thinking, like, if you were in there in Germany in 1937, how would you stop the Nazi party? You can't. You're just as helpless as you are now with the whole, like, Trump cult. Like, you can't do anything. You can't tell, you can't explain to these people, like, this is why it's you're all logic- fake. Yeah. It's a worldview shift that they have. You can't explain to them how dangerous. Like you can't do anything. They're like driving around in giant trucks, waving these crazy flags, and they're like, 
This is I, this is a helpless movement for everyone like I know. on the and outside. And that whole fucking scene was awesome, where he's like walking, and it's like clearly not really for his family. Yeah. It's more just like the Nazis' opportunity to be Nazis. And then he gets into the church, and his dad's like, "You fucking killed her!" And like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, yeah. I mean, you can see like how something like that can just bloom out of control, and the normal people who wouldn't have done that, the normal German people. Like, they, they are helpless. I mean, it feels yeah. very similar to right now. Well, and then even later in that episode, not with the Nazis, but I really like the contrast where Philip, like, he was challenged by adversity and overcame it, basically. Yeah. Whereas Charles, know, Charles yeah. does not. P- okay, Charles, I don't know how much you know about this, but Charles has a problem where, like, he's not very he's not seen as very kingly. And then on top of that, People love Diana, which I wonder if they're going to, like, I'm sure they're going to explore this. They loved her publicly, and he was, like, second fiddle to her. And she was not really royalty, right? She was just, like, some girl, as far as I know. Yeah. And she was a lot younger, too. So people blame him because she died. He sort of became painted as the villain of all this. Whereas, in reality, I think he, like, they were in a bad marriage. And he kind of is blamed unfairly. And now he's so old. So, like, everyone still associates him with Diana. And, yeah. um Well, and also, he never got the chance to inherit the throne because Elizabeth is still... That, too. But people... people, he, people I think people still dislike him. So, uh, it's interesting. I, I really like the actor. And some of the comments are like, I hope they're not going to try to paint Philip as the, the victim here and, like, Diana is crazy. But she was crazy. You mean Charles. Sorry, Charles, yeah. I keep... Yeah. Yeah, but she was crazy. She was crazy, and he made a dumb decision after this whole. Uh, what's her name? Oh, you haven't seen it yet, um, Camilla. I'm only in season two. Yeah, Camilla's in season I, three. I, I haven't started three yet. So. Um. All right. Yeah, The Crown is such a great show. It really is. I really enjoy it. See, that's the thing. Netflix does put out a bunch of shit, but occasionally they get it right. Hey, I've been telling you this for four years. To watch I know, show. and I hey, I'm glad that I waited so oh. I have like more seasons. I I don't know. I don't. I don't. It's not. I don't like to binge it. I I've watched the first two seasons over like four or five times. Well, I'm I'm not binging. I'm watching like an episode a night or two a night, like on the weekend. Like this last weekend in the past like three days, I've watched four episodes. And that's but how but it's weird that too. you're watching them in this row because. You think about it with season four. Now that it's over, that's the end of that era. The, all those actors are gone. The whole cast is gone. So you're gonna watch it within like a couple of weeks, or two weeks, or three weeks. It's gonna be interesting. Probably, yeah. Um, well, I think I might wait a couple of days before I start three. Um, it is a little jarring when they change everybody. So Charles Dance, who played Tywin Lannister, he's he's Lord Mountbatten in season three. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> I really like Jared Harris. If you guys remember him, he was uh, he he played he played King George in The Crown, but he was in Mad Men. He was Lane Price. Yes, yes. He was really good. That's the same character as the King's Speech. Um, I'm trying to think. Who, oh, Vanessa Kirby as Princess Margaret. Fantastic casting. Yes. Hel- Helena Bonham Carter takes over, and like, she's good too. But it's I I miss the original cast a lot. Yeah, well, I like all of them. I, that's a part of why I think I need to take a little break before I do three, because I'm I'm 100 percent like I really like um, Matt Smith as Philip. People like, are hot and cold on him. They think some I like people him. hate him. Some people love. Him. I like him. Um, I really like him a lot, especially when he was planning the coronation, and you know he's all like the issues. pushing for stuff. Yeah. The, the problem with season three is they hit a lot of the same notes that you've seen. They have an episode where Philip is like not settled and kind of like, what do I do with my life? Well, that's kind of getting old, though. I think it was just they didn't have any, much material for the time period. That's why the, the season three covers a lot of years. It's 17 years in 10 episodes. Um, uh, and then they have one of Princess Margaret where she's like second fiddle. Like they've done that also. Um, I think the Prince Charles episodes are the best. Anyway, so I'm looking forward to starting season four. All right, uh, moving on to gaming. There's kind of a lot here. Um, Miles Morales came out. Everett, you beat it. What's your rating? Uh, I give it a win. It's short. Uh, What you said before about there not being many boss fights, I didn't really think that mattered that much. Um, But they fixed a lot of the 
like it feels a little bit more fluid than PS4 Spider-Man. And they've made some improvements honestly, to the uh, uh, combat. Yeah, they made some improvements. It's really fun to play. I love uh, swinging around in the into the Spider-Verse suit. Yeah, and you can do the frame rate thing. That's pretty cool. Yeah, you do the you do the frame rate thing. Um, but overall, yeah, I give it a win. I don't even care that it's short. It's great. I'm taking my time with it. I, I like. I play a little bit. I don't want to. I don't want to rush through it like for the first time. You know. Uh, I really like the writing in these games. I think it's really solid. Don't you think Miles's voice is kind of whiny? A little bit, but I didn't really notice. It's a. It's an interesting voice. Like not not just for a black person or for a male, but just in general, it's like a. It's a weird voice. <laughs> I haven't I really noticed. I don't really get. You haven't noticed. I, I honestly like. I don't mind the way he sounds. He he gets weird sometimes. I don't know. Um, he, I had an idea. What if Miles gets the symbiote in the next one? Huh. Because I, I was thinking I, like he's so innocent that I wonder like it would almost corruption. make sense. Yeah, for him, for like him to be corrupted somehow, and for Peter to have to fight him. Who do you think would win in a fight? Like Miles Morales with all of his power or Peter Parker the more experienced? Miles, right? Because Miles has more tools. Miles has like actual powers. Yeah. Like he can disappear. He can turn invisible. He can electric shock. Like Peter, that's hard. That's hard to deal with. And then he has all the spider abilities that Peter has too. Mm -hmm. I don't know. He's definitely more like explosive as a Spider-Man. He's athletic and dynamic. Um, Yeah. Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and neither of you bought it, right? No. No. So I've seen Jade play it. The thing is, like, I really, I have two reasons for wanting to buy this game. Number one, I need to use some of the Viking stuff as reference. Like, when I do my art stuff for, like, Fantasy Worlds or whatever, sometimes I use video games that are sort of set within cultures that I like because I can look for backgrounds. I can get, like, backgrounds from there Um, and, like, architectural design. So, like, I, I always knew I was going to get Valhalla eventually because I wanted to take a look at the Viking ships and maybe some of their, like, villages, see what those look like. Um, Jade has been playing it, and, like, a lot of the ground looks like... It looks very video game world. Like, not... You know how Breakpoint kind of looks realistic? Mm-hmm. Even though yeah, Wildlands sorry. was better? I see what you mean, yeah. But it has, like... The texture on the ground looks more realistic, and... Uh, Valhalla seems like a video game to me, um, and and the combat looks kind of boring. Just slightly to interject, if you're looking for backgrounds, For Honor, if you play through the campaign, has knights, Vikings, and samurai villages, backgrounds, cities, castles, ships. Yeah, the campaign to For Honor is awesome, and it's two player. Uh, maybe, isn't it usually filled with people? What do you mean? Like, isn't it usually filled with NPCs around that are like? I mean, family? yeah, but you can you can defeat them and then there's no one there. Yeah, like one game I used was Rise, Son of Rome, so I could get like some Roman streets, and so. Yeah, well, I'll look into it. Um, all right, moving on. So there was a breakpoint update. They, I think we reported it last week. They let you change some stuff up. It's it's better. Like the game is better. It still has a lot of issues. Um. Mostly, yeah. like, in terms of polish. It just doesn't play the way it's supposed to. Um, the menus suck. We, well, we encountered several bugs yeah. just in our, like, brief playtime. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. We would change the time. It would change the time, but nothing changed. Like, me and Kia were playing, and we had to wait till night for a mission. We waited till night, but the time didn't change, and the guy's like... Good thing you waited until night. This mission would be hard during the day. And we're like, what the hell are you talking yeah. about? Yeah. Um, Everett, do you want to review your Xbox Series X? Sure. Um, so yeah, I got lucky and I managed to get my hands on not only the Xbox, but also the storage uh, um, expansion for it. Um, basically, I, I made like a few notes on it. It's very quiet. Um, turning on and playing like the way we do, I don't hear it at all. The only time it's ever really made any real noise is when I put a disc in, which I've only done once. And besides that, it's yeah, it's completely quiet. I mean, does, uh, it's Emerson. Does your Xbox One X make a lot of noise? Mm, it can, depending on what I'm doing. But like, Mine you know, it depends. Really. All right. Um, it's it's larger than I thought. It's it's not built long ways. Like the way you 
So a normal Xbox is meant to be like placed on its side. It's a little flat. This is like a Wi-Fi tower. It's like a brick almost. Um, it has like the little plastic parts on the side, so you can put it on its side if you really want. But was there a version that didn't have a disk drive? Yeah, it's the S, the white one, which is smaller and less powerful. Oh yeah. But um, yeah, so it's it's pretty tall. It's about a little bit more than a foot in height, and it's like about seven inches across. So I have to put it off to the side, otherwise it blocks my TV. Um, it downloads things very fast. So Modern Warfare, which at the time of downloading it was about 170 gigs, I think. Am I right, Emerson? Like in that ballpark? Well, 200. Okay. Um, took me about an hour and a half to download. So for a, like a game of that size, it was extremely fast. Um, very fast loading times. I think that's one of the selling points of the Series X is that it loads extremely fast. So games like Destiny or like Red Dead Redemption, like you know how long those load times are. Um, on average, like I'll use Destiny as an example, it would take me about two to three to four minutes to load into the game and start walking around like on the ground. With this, it takes me um, a minute, if not less than a minute, to actually start like moving around. So extremely fast load times. It's very fluid. I haven't tested the like the single player switch, but what you should test for the load times is GTA five. I I'm you gonna do test that. how long I, I, that's that currently was downloading. Ridiculous how long it could take in some of those lobbies. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure I specifically okay, let, time me, let me ask you a question. What what's the heat like coming out of the heat um, exhaust port at the top? Well okay yeah so it vents heat up the top. I haven't really felt it. It's not like radiating heat like my old Xbox did where if I put my hand in the area felt like it was on an oven with this I, I don't really notice it at all and the fan doesn't go loud enough for me to think there's a problem see but i, I want to get it i just can't find it like literally it comes into stock and it's scooped up or i'm at work and i miss the launch and yeah that's like everywhere is sold out it's nuts but um but moving on i only have a few more points the one thing that i wish they kind of changed the ui is the exact same so what you see on oh, Xbox same. X is the exact same as what you'll see on Series X. Same menus, same. Well, I kind of like that. I don't have to learn something new. Yeah, you don't have to learn something new, but it it doesn't really feel like that much of a change. It, it, the change is only visible when you start seeing the the, the actual gameplay. I mean, that's where it should be. Yeah. Um, the controller is a little bit different. The D-pad is shaped a little bit differently. It's got a little bit more texture to it. They added a third capture button in between the start and back buttons. Some people have a problem with it. I don't. In fact, I've used it quite a few times, and it's really convenient. I think you press it once for a screenshot. You hold it for a, a video capture. It, re it really helps that I don't have to open up the menu and scroll all the way down to capture. In order to do it, I can just do it right off the controller. Um, what else? Oh, okay, the storage space. So... The one that I got shipped with about a terabyte of space, which with all the software installed goes down to about 800 gigs. Um, the expansion is a definite must-have. Cost about 215 bucks. I got it at Best Buy. Those are in stock if you can you know, go to a Best Buy. Uh, it's very easy to plug in. You just plug it into the back. It's practically invisible once it's in. And it, it's seamless. Well, it's like an S it almost looks like, like an SD card, doesn't it? Yeah, almost. It's 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 a little bit bigger than an SD card. It's about the size of a flash drive, almost. And it comes with a little cover so you can carry it around and use it. But um, and the last thing I'll say about it is, in terms of actual gameplay, I've tested out a few games. So um, I downloaded a few just for testing. So I downloaded Destiny 2 that I've been playing. Runs perfectly. Red Dead Redemption 2 runs perfectly fluid frames it's it looks beautiful in that um the 4k um i played fortnite on it that's specifically optimized for it that runs about the same it looks a little bit better i noticed my draw distance is a lot bigger than it used to be which is nice um sea of thieves i tried once that is an absolute change um what i used to run on my other xbox is now co like a completely different game it's still boring but it looks beautiful <laughs> um COD runs great, so Modern Warfare runs perfectly. The frames are extremely fluid. There's a lot more detail. And the load times are extremely fast. 
which I love. Um, in terms of Breakpoint, Breakpoint is the only game I've played so far that actually had any noticeable issues. Um, yes, it runs great. It runs very fluid. It's a lot more detailed. It runs faster in some ways. Like it's you know it's more frames per second, so it's a little bit more fluid, like I've been saying. But I have been getting some fuzz issues, and maybe to explain a little bit, I'll get these like fuzzy noises. I'll get some uh, like some freezes every once in a while. There are some noticeable glitches, but I don't think that's the software. I think that's more the game itself. Hmm. So overall, like in the about day and a half I've had it, I'd give it a win so far. Hmm. Highly recommend it to anyone who wants a new Xbox. Well, I'm glad you managed oh. to, to get it. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to wait. I don't really hear like faster load times. It's already pretty fast. I don't know. Um, and everything else... Like, I don't know what else would be the main selling point. Why would you spend $500 on a new console since they typically have issues when they come out anyway? I mean, you're right. Like, that, I haven't discovered anything yet, though. It feels pretty solid. Like, yeah. coming from my last Xbox, which was a glitchy, buggy mess. This I is mean, nice I feel like I pace. just bought... Did you ever have an Xbox One X ever? Yeah, my last one was an Xbox oh, One Jesus, X. So you, but it was yeah. like... It was like, because I, like like, I had to buy a new Xbox anyway. So I feel like I bought my Xbox like two years ago. I don't. That was like four hundred. I don't want to spend another five hundred on, essentially the same thing, except faster. Um, yeah, it might be worth it to wait. Like you're not missing really anything with the uh, with it being out of stock right now, but it, it's really convenient. I think if you're looking for like better play experience. All right, uh, Everett's game of smartass. All right, let's pull no that No trailers out. that I know of. Um, all right, Emerson, it is your turn to start this week. Let's do person. Person. All right, ready? Yep. Here we go. I was born in the 1900s. I grew up in New York City. I joined the military as a young man and served in the Signal Corps. I have made numerous appearances in live action and animated films. I'm largely associated with Marvel Comics. I was awarded the National Medal of Arts. Nick Fury? Nope. One of my titles is the Godfather of Comics. I have worked extensively with Steve Ditko. Oh, it's a person. <laughs> Perhaps my most famous creation is the, um, the character of Spider-Man. And my initials are SL. Uh, Stan Lee. Yep, nice. Really, Stan Lee? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be real. I, had, I, was like, I was like, okay, is it Captain America? Because, but he wasn't in the Signal Corps. And, like, like, and then I got the minute Kia got it wrong, and Everett's like, he created this character. And I was like, ah, ah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's why the game's called Smartass. All right, all let's right. go with Thing. Thing. All right, here we go. Ready? I am very old and very powerful. I have been wielded by both heroes and villains alike. I am small enough to fit in the palm of your hand. I have traveled through time at least once. In the MCU, I was used to give Scarlet Witch her powers. I can the control... The Mind Stone? Yeah, nice. Oh, wow. I didn't know... I was like, what the fuck was the scepter called? I was like, ah... I feel like every week the clue is it can fit in the palm of your hand. Yeah, it does seem like <laughs> well, I, that okay, like leap. that's like one of the descriptors. It can fit in the palm of your hand. It's about the size of a microwave. It's like this, this, no, this, and this. It's that, and it's like this is a base of operations. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. All right I'll, I'll, I'll try to. Go I'll try ahead. To, no, no, no. Uh, it's fine. It. It's just funny. All right. Last place is uh, place. Ready. I am located yeah. in the United States. Oh, I should probably uh, clarify. There are two possible answers for this. Oh, God. Um, it's just clarification, but either one will work. <clears throat> I'm located in the United States. I have sister locations all over the world that are a part of the same chain of businesses. 
This location provides special services such as equipment or medical staffing for their clientele. I have appeared in every film in the series I'm associated with. A person may find safety inside this location so long the as Continental they Continental Hotel. The yeah, nice job. Oh, God damn it. Um, all right, since that was the last question, do you want the extra question? Yeah. All right, your, final, your extra question is, what is the Continental's number one rule that can't be broken? Oh, um, no business on company grounds. Yep, correct. All right, so Emerson gets three points this week, and Kia gets one, which brings our total to Emerson 32, Kia 34. Wow. All right. <laughs> count the points. <laughs> Stop the <laughs> count. <laughs> I'm just saying that. I'm just, that's going to have. I'm going to say it every episode from now on. <laughs> um, All right. Hmm. Moving on to news. Uh, we have a bunch of crap to talk about from the Snyder Cut. Ooh. So he kind of right. he kind of made a weird comment. He says, I will say that in the end, it's going to be probably about four minutes or five minutes of additional photography for the entire movie. In the four hours that is Justice League, maybe four extra minutes. So everyone's like, he they did all those reshoots for four minutes? I don't know. I don't know how it works out because he had all that unused footage, right? Yeah, because is he saying like so, four minutes of new shoot? Well, yeah, that is what he's saying. But like people, I don't know how much of the budget was like for the reshoots did they did they compile that with like how much it would cost to finish the cgi and all those unused footage scenes or you know what i mean yeah so anyway the reshoots look like four minutes so interesting okay i guess we'll see um uh so talking about who he would cast as catwoman in (laughs) his version he says, probably, I would say Carla's Catwoman, he's talking about Carla Gugino, is perfect. Oh. You would have to say there's a flashback to 10 years ago when they were a thing. And then he had to arrest her. I don't know what happened. Or he had to let her go, and it tweaked him. So she's not in it. But, yeah. I mean, She should be a good fit. She's a little, um, she's a little old, for one, but I guess that's okay for this role and also isn't she kind of like a full figured woman like not very cat like am i thinking of the wrong person i thought she was like kind of curvy i mean it could be he just has like his own idea i guess i don't know i'm looking at pictures i guess she i guess she could be i don't know she's starting to look a little older now though um all right Zack Snyder teases Robin Easter Egg and how he'd use the Boy Wonder. Um, there's a Robin Easter Egg in Justice League. It's a puppies. Stop. Jade's not here. It, it's a it's a Robin line. I think you have to wait and see. I can't say exactly. Um, I mean, to me, the way you do a Robin story in the Justice League universe with Batman is like drinking and remembering, and we see what happened. We understand who Robin was to him, and we got to experience what was the circumstances for the Joker and Robin coming together. Okay? So not really bringing him in, just... Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, more Justice League. Why he agreed to do this for HBO. I pitched them the movie, right? Like I go, this is, you're going to be this, this is where it's going, right? Justice League. Well, and starting, and when I talk about Jason or Ezra, you know, it's starting, you know, it's like way back to BVS years ago. Same with Amy. It was about, you know, this, that we were going somewhere, you know, and I feel like when I had, when this opportunity arrived and came to me, you know, I got this call and, you know, um, Toby Emmerich called me to say, hey, is this thing you'd be interested in doing? Is this thing you'd be interested in doing? And it was shockingly, frankly, I wasn't. It was shocking, frankly. I wasn't ready, but I thought about it. I thought of. 
It doesn't say. It. <laughs> I thought about this. What the fuck is this? It's like someone <laughs> put a speech through Google Translate. Thinking about yeah. it, one of the big things that got me to say all right to this huge job. It's crazy, but it was that commitment I made to those actors about like, let's finish this. Let me put it back. Let me honor what we talked about creating. You know, because I just you know famously I've never seen the theatrical cut of Justice League, but I can only imagine that it's not what we talked about. So. There's, there's why he did it. That was the most confusing <laughs> and like meaningless thing I've ever heard. How many times does he have to say you know? I'm not going to tell you what happens in the little scene, but some water has gone under the proverbial bridge between the last we saw Joker and this appearance. He's made some... He's a road-weary Joker. I guess that's a way of saying it. That's... The new look for Joker in the Justice League. Jane, okay. Jane Leto. Okay. Um, Thor, Love and Thunder, adds Guardians of the Galaxy actor Chris Pratt as Star-Lord. So, I don't okay. know. Cool. I don't know. It doesn't really say why or what, but yeah. Star-Lord is going to be in that movie. Another weird one. Suicide Squad adds Sylvester Stallone in a mystery role. I saw that. Reuniting him with Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 director James Gunn. So, also that. Um, Now we have a a bunch of little small things. It looks like they've confirmed Haley Steinfeld as Kate Bishop for the Hawkeye series. Um, You guys know, you guys remember her from Bumblebee? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, it looks like there's an Instagram thing, which I didn't actually see uh yeah i don't know whatever so they're talking about that did you guys see george lucas's original star wars plan did you guys come across that no oh oh for the for the new what he would have done as the next trilogy recently a page was shared from the star wars archives episodes one through three 1999 to 2005 and in that it's revealed george lucas considered having maul serve as a lead villain in his sequels with Darth Talon taking on a Darth Vader type role. Luke Skywalker was going to focus on rebuilding the Jedi Order, while Leia Organa was set to eventually become Supreme Chancellor. Huh. Yeah, well, the sequel sucked ass, so. <laughs> um, Johnny Depp was fired from Fantastic Beasts, reported last week. This week, they are looking at Mads Mikkelsen to replace him. I saw that, yeah. It's not bad. Um. Wonder Woman 1984 could move to HBO Max, so it's, the story is not that it, it will. It's They're just saying it seems like they might make that choice. Um, it was set to be released in theaters on Christmas Day. Uh, right now, that's obviously not on the table. A debut on a- HBO Max shortly after the movie arrives in theaters is one option, as is a delay to next summer. It's ultimately going to boil down to whether Warner Brothers decides to hold off and try and make as much money as possible, or see how beneficial a streaming debut is to subscriber. To, to, to subscriber moments? I don't know what that means. Um, but yeah, that's... that's. I don't know. This has gone a long time. You can't push Wonder Woman to next summer. Yeah, I know. Yeah, God um, forbid people might lose some hype over it. Uh, on the topic of CGI Chadwick Boseman... They're saying, it's not happening. There's only one Chadwick, and he's not with us, <laughs> said uh, someone at Marvel. Our king, unfortunately, has died in real life, not just in fiction, and we are taking a little time to see how we return to the story and what we do to honor this chapter of what has happened to us that was so unexpected, so painful, and terrible, really. That's good. Although, I do think they could have maybe like given him an action sequence with the mask on. It's going to be weird if you don't see him at all. Um, WandaVision gets a premiere date January 15th, 2021 Oh boy Oh god, okay And that ends our episode That's the news Um, So we'll do Far From Home next week, right? Yeah, Far From Home Alright, I'll see you guys later See ya ya. Thank 
thank you for listening to the Iron Coop Fights Movies. If you enjoyed the show, please be sure to like, share, subscribe, and most importantly, review our podcast on iTunes so that we can spread the show around. To contact the show, you can reach us at theironcoob at gmail.com and on Instagram at theironcoob. Join us for another edition of the Iron Coop Fights Movies.